friends, the same people. The only thing that changes is who is sharing. The same as appropriation. So we are a very special committee. Uh, we are going to deal with today's item. It's nine hours. Yeah, uh, Honorable Karim, it tells me it's nine hours. So All right. we are going to deal with the uh, strike plan, the items. We are going to have two presenters, uh, the two officials from both uh, select committees who are going to make presentation in as far as the strike plan is concerned. Members will be given an opportunity to seek clarities, to make input. And uh, please remember, we still have, we have three hours but we have an item that uh, we need to, to deal with at the end of the meet, of this workshop. Um, all the outstanding minutes that we need to, to, to adopt. So uh, before I waste more time and without further ado, I'm going to request uh, one of the officials, Mayor Esther Mahube, to kickstart uh, today's uh, session, presentation on the threat plan uh, from the side of uh, finance. Uh, Chairperson. Yes. Chairperson, may I just come in, please? I forgot to yes. raise this to you last night or yesterday afternoon. Um, well, I don't think we'll come to this, but there are two items that will require quorum. The first is, so it's a workshop until the last 20 minutes or so, half an hour maximum, if we need that at all, to adopt outstanding minutes from both committees. So that becomes a committee meeting. In one case, it'll be CCOF, in other case, it'll be SCAR. The second item, which I forgot to raise with you, because I don't think we'll come to this, and in Polilico trying to facilitate it, is that there's a matter that goes back to November last year, and since the last meeting today, uh, and we might have to convene on Thursday, unless Treasury, the DG in particular, responds, uh, we have to take a decision on that. So in a nutshell, it's this. Uh, I'll deal with it later because we have to take a resolution and an agreement that we meet on Thursday. So last year, November, we will recall, in a nutshell, I don't know who's meeting up, we took a decision that if you look on the recommendations, that there's no point in further exchanging with Mr. Meek and about his lands only, land only policy, and we require the department to respond to him and close the matter. He, in fact, didn't turn up to this side of the bargain. He didn't turn up and make representations yet again on the same issue, which none of the committees in the parliament, none of the parties in the committee agreed to about lands only evaluations and taxes uh, in February this year. But Treasury hasn't replied, and he wrote to me, and I wrote to the, the DG, uh, the DDG and tax and Cindy as a parliamentary liaison officer. And this morning in Kuleleko is facilitating some, uh, yet again, unnecessary, he's busy. We don't have the staff they do. If they don't reply by 10 o'clock, this item goes on the agenda with a proposal that we have a meeting for one hour where the DG must come and explain why he's treating parliament with such disdain if he doesn't reply. So that's an important matter, Comrade Chair, because it will require just one hour on Thursday, but we have to take a decision today, thanks. I think uh, the decision will be taken uh, when we deal with the minutes as a committee. Uh, I think members have heard the importance of the matter that we can, within our, our busy schedule, try to compromise one hour for, for that matter. Um, uh, Esther Mamrobe. Um, of, uh, do you have present? Good. Can question. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Esther, can you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to switch off so that I don't disturb you. You can continue, me. Uh, good morning, members. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Esther. Yes, you. <clears throat> yes we can. Thank you, Nkululego. Uh, good morning, members and staff. 
let me start off by saying let me start off by saying that I did not prepare a PowerPoint presentation. The reason being that I didn't know that we are going to have to present to make presentations. See? Um, but I will go through the, the word document because now it's also consolidated. It will be a bit tricky for me, but I'll try. So I'm going to ask Ngululeko or, or Lubabalo to put the, the document on the screen and then browse from, for me, please. Do you see it on your side? Yes, I can see it. Thank you. Yeah, let's move down. OK. So it's consolidated uh, draft APP for the financial year 21-22. Um, go down. Eh? Let's keep the strategic overview part. Um, it's the same every year. It's for, uh, uh, for parliament as well. Stop here. So I'll start on the mandate of the committees. I will speak to finance, but you can see I have separated finance and appropriations, but basically, um, it's the mandate derived from the Money Bills Act. So I will not go through it. I'm just um, referring to the members that we are um, established in terms of Section 42 of the Money Bills Act. And then we are required from the finance side to consider and report on issues such as national macroeconomic and fiscal policy and the fiscal um, amendments, the fiscal framework, the revised fiscal framework and revenue proposals. And Chairperson? 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 Hello. Yeah, sorry to disturb you. Yes. No can problem. you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Okay. I want to, yeah, I want to remind you there, I, I know you said you are just browsing through but uh, I think it's also important that you, 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 you help us to understand and know how to, to pronounce these things. You said okay. we are established as per section 4.2. And that is section 4, subsection 2. So <laughs> we need to get used to you okay. know, saying these things correctly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Jefferson. Section 4, uh, subsection 2 of the Money Bills Act, that's the short summary for Money Bills Amendment Procedures and Related Matters Act. Um, okay. And then we are also required to report and consider on actual revenue published by the National Treasury and any other related matter set out in this act. Let's move down. The strategic goals and objectives of the committees. Uh, we will focus on the left-hand side of this table for now. Um, the goal, the overall, the overarching goal is the effective oversight over government finances to ensure responsiveness to the needs of the people of South Africa. And then from there, we have, um, as a committee, developed the strategic objectives. We have about seven. The first one uh, being processing the fiscal framework in terms of the Money Bills Act. And then we process legislation or bills and double tax agreements and other international agreements. Thirdly, we uh, conduct oversight over the SARS and monitor revenue collection. Four, we conduct um, oversight over National Treasury and the entities falling under it. And then strategic objective five um, is where we are required to work with other committees in the economic cluster on economic growth or economic matters in general. And then we facilitate public participation. And the last one is capacity building of members. Um, the updated situational analysis, I will not go through it. I will just indicate that we are guided by the strategic plan of parliament, by the objectives of the NDP, and also we take direction from the 2021 SONA, the 2021 budget review, 
and also the NCOP guidelines for uh, committee's annual reviews and planning a session, the session that we could not um, attend as a, as a committee. So that session in short required that we should reflect on our own performance. And then we consider the performance plans of portfolios, entities and departments in their areas of um, responsibility. This was not only for finance and appropriations, it was for all uh, select committees. And then we must take into consideration and align plans to ah, English, inviolable mandates of lawmaking, intergovernmental relations oversight and facilitation of um, public involvement. The strategic objectives that I have just um, uh, spoken about uh, by a large extent, they are trying to um, be aligned to the mandate of parliament, which is um, lawmaking, oversight, public um, participation, and IGR um, relations. And then from there, what I'm doing basically is to just say NDP um, is about government's plan to grow the economy, eradicate poverty, increase employment and reduce inequality by 2030 uh, in brief. And then I'm going into the, the, the summary of SONA priorities outlined by the president, but these are just those that I thought would be relevant to, um, to our committees because um, the SONA, as you would know, it was quite long. So on economic matters, um, the SONA highlighted that um, we need to adapt to the global economy budget has to be reprioritized. And then also mentioning also that the, the, the growth, economic growth, growth has declined um, significantly. Um, please move down. Uh, uh, the SONA also in brief reported progress made in terms of implementing the economic reconstruction and recovery plan. The details are summarized here in the next paragraphs. Um, priority one, priority two, three, and four. So I will not speak to it. I will, um, it's there for members to refer back to. You can move Ngululeko. We are still on so now we can move to economic sector analysis. Um, here, I will not also go into the details because as the Committee of Finance, we are just coming back from the uh, fiscal framework and revenue proposals process where we have covered these issues at length. I put them here in the APP just to guide us also so that we don't forget the, 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 the economic environment within which we operate as finance and, and appropriations. So this, uh, uh, the bulk of this information is in the budget review and also in our report. Um, please move down. Um, stop. Stop before the spending issues, just the last paragraph. Before sector analysis spending paragraphs. Yes, here. Yeah. Um, yeah, in summary, um, the economic um, sector analysis is reminding that the South African economy remains stagnant, that growth has not recovered to pre-crisis level, levels, and the economy continues to shed jobs at a faster rate. And then the deteriorated economic environment translated into lower revenue collection and the highest rate of unemployment on record since 2008. In terms of the fiscal indicators, they have not improved. Actually, they've also deteriorated and neither did the financial situation at most SOEs and municipalities. This is also just a reminder that we are operating within a very constrained um, economic environment. Um, you can move down. Uh, let's keep the, the, the appropriations part. Um, Pelelani will speak about that. Let's move down. I'll tell you where to stop.
Yeah, stop here. Uh, at the beginning of the, the heading there. Yeah, here. Um, review of the committee strategic planning deliberations. Um, here, I'm just giving a background of what happened since the last NCOP workshop we held as a committee, 2020, and this year again, the workshops that we could not um, attend due to the clashes of the committee program and the, the NCOP program. So when we met the last time, we made a few resolutions and uh, they are captured on the left-hand side um, on the update of committee resolutions made in 2019-20. And on the right hand side, it's progress made. So in terms of the first one, a clear definition of roles. What happened since then is that we had a briefing on clarity of the role and mandate of Select Committee on Finance from Parliament's Legal Service Section. It was led by Advocate Jenkins in 2019. Let's move down. And the meeting resolved that the committee will focus on its mandate as described in the Money Bills Act. And move down. The second one was about the joint sitting with NA committees without sacrificing the independence of the NCOP. Uh, with respect to progress made, um, in 2020, we held taxation laws briefings and public hearings jointly with um, SCOF, Standing Committee on Finance. And then after they finished their process, we continued with uh, the NCOP process, having separate briefings. So um, I'm putting a question mark as to whether in 2021, the committee will do so or whether the committee will decide otherwise. I will leave it to the committee for when the committee deliberates. Um, but we can move down. Um, just before the appointment of the director, the last bit. Yeah, um, I'm also indicating there that due to COVID-19 pandemic, um, we had to do joint meetings with SCOF regarding the budget votes and we adopted the same uh, report. I'm just reflecting that part. And then the third resolution um, was the appointment of the PBO director. I'm just reporting progress that um, that activity has since been done. Uh, Dr. Dumisani Jenkins um, was appointed as the director in the PBO by the four committees on finance and appropriations. In terms of the focus um, areas agreed upon in 2019-20, we had planned an oversight on SEZ um, special economic zones in cooperation with other relevant committees. And then um, COVID-19 outbreak happened. We could not do that. Uh, however, we, um, we had um, briefings with two entities reporting to National Treasury, EBA and DBSA in 2020. And then we had the um, special budget adjustment process, which is an additional process that also took time away from uh, the planned committees, uh, committee activities. And then um, you, you can move down. We had a capacity building workshop at Saab in 2019-20 with National Treasury and SARS. And then in terms of capacity building as well, we had um, inductions, presentations were made. We had PBO also um, making presentations to the committee. And then the SALGA investment conferences and the parliamentary network chapter, it has not been done. I'm flagging those that have been done and those that have not been done and the reasons why. Um, you can skip number nine, it's appropriation. Skip this one as well. And stop here at number 10. Um, here, I'm hoping the discussion will be centered around number, uh, point number 10 
which is the proposed focused areas for 2021-22 financial year. So I've just put them in terms of um, our mandate as a committee and also trying to align that to the mandate of parliament, um, which is mostly oversight, legislation, uh, public participation, etc. So uh, bullet number one, um, in terms of the national budget and the MTBPS processes, which is what we do um, twice a year as the Select Committee on Finance. I am just saying we will continue to do that. The bill is that it's, the, it's in the act, it's something that we must do by law. And then we can follow up on recommendations made to the minister in the fiscal framework reports with standing committee on finance where possible. And then we can request a briefing from National Treasury on the economic and fiscal risks management strategy, the debt management strategy to stabilize um, debt and progress with implementation of the ERRP. These are some of the recommendations we made in the report. And then we can, as a committee, maybe from the research and from the content side, monitor the risks to the fiscal framework, including but not limited to the impact of the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy, implementation, yeah, the rate at which the growth um, reforms are implemented, we can monitor progress on that. Um, we can monitor the outcomes of negotiations with workers' unions on the wage bill, because we can remember we had discussions about this in the um, public hearings where also members expressed their um, concerns that it appears like the fiscal framework is um, highly dependent on the outcomes of these negotiations. So we'll keep an eye on that. The decisions taken by the credit rating agencies might also affect the fiscal framework. So we'll keep an eye on that, as well as the potential impact of extra budgetary issues, including SOE bailouts. That's on the national budget and the MTBPS processes that we do twice a year. On oversight, um, I just want to emphasize these are suggestions or proposals. So members will discuss and decide what to take out and what to leave or yeah, and make further input. Um, we can, uh, there are 14 entities reporting to national treasury. So over the financial year, we can choose six out of entities if time allows, and then we can pick which ones we want to see um, in the financial year and then receive briefings from uh, the entities. And then this one on briefing on implications of zero-based budgeting by National Treasury with input from FFC is a a proposal by the member, and it's also in the, um, the recommendations in the fiscal framework report. And then we can um, also request a briefing by National Treasury and SARS on revenue enhancement initiatives, including illicit flows and currency protection. Um, we have spoken about illicit flows um, for quite a number of years now um, in our reports. We can monitor revenue collection at SARS. And then, for example, when we call um, SARS, we can engage them on issues such as ad uh, SARS addressing its challenges, its inefficiencies, and accessibility of its office, offices at provinces and municipalities, including in rural areas. There are public education and outreach um, programs. There are revenue generating mechanism at ports of entry, for example. And then at the SEZs and industrial development zones, one-stop shops, um, and the efficiency of the systems that are used to um, collect revenue. Um, the last one would be, this is a, a standing item um, which we put in the previous APP of um, SARS visits to Mozambique and Limpopo border posts regarding customs and excise duties. So members can decide if this should come out or if it's still um, uh, relevant given the, the, the current um, pandemic. On legislation, 
Um, we will continue to process all bills before the committee from the National Treasury and SARS. Um, there are standing bills, annual bills, TLEP, uh, taxation amendment laws, uh, administration bill, rates and monetary amounts. Um, the auditing profession we just uh, finalized, so I'll remove it. The financial sector laws amendment bill, the financial sector laws levies. Some of these bills like the PFMA and the Reserve Bank amendment bills, I don't know if they will be referred to the committee. Um, if they are, yeah, that's what we are going to be dealing with. And then we can conduct um, oversight over bills passed by the committee in the previous parliament. Um, to, we can request progress uh, with implementation of these bills passed to determine whether these bills are achieving their intended policy objectives. So in the next bullet, I'm just um, highlighting some of the bills that we have passed as the Select Committee on Finance um, between 2012 and now, which include the credit rating bill, the financial markets bill, the customs and excise bill, employment tax incentive bill, DBSA amendment bill, the banks amendment bill in 2015, the insurance bill, the financial sector regulation bill, and the sugar tax uh, bill in 2017. Um, often in our reports, uh, when we adopt bills, we would say we will follow up on um, implementation of the, the amendments to determine whether they are achieving what they are set out to do. Um, please move down. Uh, on public participation and cooperative governance, we will conduct public hearings on the national budget and MTBPS. We do this twice a year, every year, so it's nothing new. And we also will conduct public hearings on the other bills um, referred to the committee. Um, we will strengthen committee working relationship with other committees in the economic cluster, um, citing the special economic zones as an example there. We will follow up with National Treasury and SARS regarding progress made in addressing issues raised by the stakeholders in the 2021 public hearings, such as the health pro promotion levy increase, illicit tobacco issues, and the purchase of, of uh, locally produced uh, cars. This, the members can decide whether it should be taken out. It's just a suggestion from me, really. Um, yeah, yeah, but overall, we will continue to represent as a committee the interest of provinces and municipalities in the national sphere of government, the interest of cooperative governance. The last one, capacity building. Um, the committee will continuously capacitate itself in order to deliver on its mandate. Um, one member, I think it was Mr. Ryder, suggested a follow-up visit to the Reserve Bank, uh, similar to what we had at the beginning of the term of parliament, sixth parliament. And then the briefing by SARS on international agreements. Um, as a committee in this parliament, we have not had any international agreements referred to us. Um, what happens is that they normally expire at the same time, which is at the end of the fifth year or the 10th year. So this term of parliament, we may or we may not get referrals on international agreements. So I'm putting this point here um, to suggest that SARS should brief the committee on international agreements because members may not be aware of what they are about because we haven't de dealt with them in this term of parliament. And then um, also on capacity building, I think the I heard Mr. Momo um, from National Treasury suggesting that um, we can have a discussion on taxation and financial sector issues. Um, 
So we can follow up on that um, because taxation issues, we deal with them every every year on, with TLAP and TALAP and rates and, and monetary um, bills. And then lastly, there I'm indicating that the PBO, the FFC and committee support staff will also continue to capacitate um, the committee. Um, move down, please. This is appropriations. I may have, oh, I may be, okay, I'll stop there. Um, this table just outlines um, the strategic objectives and targets. This is a format that we follow as the committee section. Um, after we have agreed as a committee on the activities that we'll undertake in, in this financial year, then we will um, plot them into this um, table uh, per quarter, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. So what I've put in there is what I have suggested in what, what, what I have just discussed in the proposals today. Um, um, in the discussions uh, session, members can also um, deliberate on that and then we will finalize um, this section. Um, some of the things are standard like the bills and the MTDPS and national budget. However, other issues, other things like the oversight to SARS and Mozambique, Limpopo, the members can decide on that and then we'll either leave it there or take it out or change the, the, the date. Um, move uh, to the bottom. Yeah, I think that's more or less what I wanted to explain on this, um, on this table. Move down, let me see if there's anything else left. Um, it, yeah, I've come to the end, I think, of finance. Uh, I will hand it, uh, I will hand back over to the chairperson. Thank you, Esther. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, honorable members, can I see by the raise your hand indication that you want to get into the discussions of the presentation? Chairperson, I see can I only explain? one hand. To... Yes, Honorable Karim. Yeah, ask you can't raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, I don't if you are, your radio or your TV this, this is coming. Sorry, Honorable Karim, we can't hear you clearly. Honorable Karim, you can come in. You want to make a follow up? Yeah. Yeah, what goes around comes around, Honorable Karim. You were laughing at me last week. That's exactly what you demonstrated is happening to you now. Uh, I I don't know. Can I come back to you? Maybe check happening with your, your yeah. Audio I've checked audio just, day uh, and yeah. uh, is it any better now? Sorry, very much you... good. It's very uh, audible. Thank. You. It's very audible. Yeah, you can okay. talk now. Okay, because I was speaking through the JBL because I had to leave my desk as it were. So look very quickly. Obviously, as a co-chair. Uh, I have some say, presumably, in the process matters. So it's something I want to put to you and to the committee. Um, you see, uh, maybe we should have explained to the committee members what we seek to do here. Uh, and maybe this should have been done at the outset. And maybe we're just wrong about it, right? But, and I know one of the, well, let's not go into the staff issues. But you see, the idea was that actually, 
In the case of the NCOP, certainly, uh, colleagues, it does seem a bit like absurd that it's the same committee, as you said, Chairperson, that meets in two different formats. The only thing that changes platforms, the only thing that changes is the chair. So what was suggested was that it seems a bit ridiculous, really. It's the same budget, but it's got different arms to it. So like two major arms, appropriations and finance. Secondly, that we should have a joint uh, strat plan because it just didn't make any sense for us to sit for three hours in finance, adopt a strat plan, then meet the next day, which is tomorrow for another three hours. And there's so much of overlap. So what was proposed was that we have a single strat plan and that it forks off into two arms, as it were. First, the fiscal framework and then the appropriations issues. Then that was discussed between the two chairs and we agreed. Then because the one chair was on family leave, the other chair contacted the house chair of committees and the chief whip, and they both agreed, yes, it doesn't make sense to have two strat plans. So I thought, Look, the job that Esther and Pelelani have done is very good. There's no doubt about that. But it's still like a parallel thing. So in other words, what we've done is we've got two halves and we've separated them. So, you know, something maybe we can look at next year is the two chairs getting more involved in assisting the staff on this. The second issue that arises is, are, are we going to discuss them then as separate first fiscal framework and then appropriations? Or are we going to hear both? and then come to the, at the end and discuss both fiscal framework issues and appropriations issues together at the end. That's the only thing I wanted to raise. That's why I'm not dealing with content issues, process issues, but I'm guided by the your view chairperson and the majority. I won't actually uh, be able to do anything more, meaning if the majority disagree, I'm cool. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Karim. When I started, I have indicated that uh, after receiving this uh, presentation by finance, we will have uh, deliberations on it and input on it. Uh, then we'll have, we'll receive the presentation by Mr. Lomo from appropriations so that we give members enough time to, to focus on each. Honorable Detroit, you can come in, sir. Honorable Chair, um, I only have one question. And um, that is referring to page 15 with the joint sittings of the National Assembly and the committees uh, without sacrificing the, the independence of the NCOP, uh, fully support the joint sittings. But uh, there's one concern, and that is the reaction time uh, is, is limited. And uh, we must not uh, uh, allow that the engagement time of the NCOP and that of the, of the NA it is, is affected negatively by the joint sittings that take place. So maybe one must look at in extending the meeting time with half an hour or so to accommodate both the NA and the NCOP to engage sufficiently with the presenters uh, during those joint engagements. Thank you, Chair. You chat yourself, uh, Honorable Detroit. I think you were not you, done. You are, you are not through. No, it's only the one point that I had to raise or that I wanted to raise with regards to the joint settings and the constraint of time or engagement time between the NA and the presenters as well as the NCOP and the presenters. Because um, one thing that def definitely came uh, to, the, to the front was placed on the table was when we have joint sittings, there were complaints that there were not enough time for members to engage with the presenters. Um, since each member was allowed three minutes and we had three members from the NCOP and three from the NA, and then um, the whole procedure was, was uh, brought to a halt on numerous occasions. So my request is, if we have joint 
engagement with different presenters or entities, that the meeting time be extended to allow more time for engagement uh, with those presenters for more uh, individuals or members from the NA and the NCOP to ask questions and to get sufficient response from the presenter's chair. Okay, thank you, uh, Honorable Detroit. I think I've heard what you're saying. It has been uh, an issue and a complaint <coughs> from ourselves. And I think we are sharing the same sentiment that uh, because the members are more, when we have joint meetings, we need to consider and talk to the authorities uh, that may, if we cannot uh, extend uh, our time of meeting so that we can give members enough time to engage on uh, the subject on the uh, honorable right, I mean, to do it. I don't know what is the feeling of other members. Uh, I know we have been complaining about that. Uh, Honorable uh, Ryder, you're next. Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, Chair, um, noting that we are only focusing on finance at the moment, I, I, before we start even, I just want to say that I think that circulating this document yesterday was a little bit yeah, it's, it's not great because, uh, you know, I don't think it's a document that's been put together at the last minute. I think it's been in circulation amongst the management group for, for, for a little bit of time. Um, and now it's been dropped on us and really it's a case of, well, here's what we want to do, so rubber stamp it. So I just, I, I feel a little bit grumpy about that this morning, I must be honest. We've been, we've been very accommodating recently with last minute reports um, that have hit because there's been a need for for last minute reports and it's been understandable but in this instance i don't think it's fair um on on members to drop this thing at the last minute and uh, yeah I, it, it's it's left me a little bit unhappy chair so i, I want to make that point quite clear um noting my inputs on the whatsapp group that i put together when we were first supposed to have uh, this discussion uh, a couple of weeks ago um you know the majority of those inputs really speak to the um um, the Appropriations Committee. Um, so, you know, those can be dealt with in, when we get to that discussion. The part that I do desperately think that we need to start talking about as finance, and, you know, what, what, what we're sitting with is a document that's making us fairly reactive. So we, you know, every, everything that's in the document, our program is, is very reactive. And I understand that perhaps it's up to the National Assembly committee to be a little bit more proactive as well um, and to start looking at trends and to start looking at, 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 at um, you know, what's happening on a, in, in a global space. But I, I do think that we can spend a little bit of time as well investigating things like the regulations around cryptocurrency, because frankly, this is a disruptor in our economy that's going to have far reaching effects. So if you just Google cryptocurrency, uh, in South Africa, uh, just those four words, um, and you, you will find that one of the biggest cryptocurrency scams in the world uh, is, has, has been housed here in South Africa. Um, you will also find that, that measures are being proposed um, uh, by Treasury that um, uh, through the FSCA, that uh, are going to, to, to curb cryptocurrency and so on. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't understand cryptocurrency uh, very well at all. And I don't want to speak for other members um, of this committee, but I think generally amongst public and the, the members of parliament, there's a lack of understanding as to what cryptocurrency is, what, what it can do and how it can be used to best effect. And we mustn't see it purely as a threat, there's opportunities in this as well, but I don't understand all of those, and I'm not sure that anyone does fully at this stage. So I really believe that presentations on something as big as this that is going to cause so much change. You know, the world has changed very quickly in the last uh, uh, 13 months uh, into an online type of environment, and things like cryptocurrency are are featuring strongly because people are finding themselves more and more sitting at home without a need for cash 
transacting electronically and so on. So, you know, Parliament and particularly the ANC is often talking about the fourth industrial revolution. We're still grappling with the third and cryptocurrencies are part of the third industrial revolution. So, you know, let, let, let's, let's start to talk about things like this that are real game changers. Um, yeah, as I said, I think that the, the rest of my uh, inputs uh, are probably more focused on, on, on appropriations. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll leave it there for now. Um, I do also just want to endorse uh, Honorable Fani Dutoy's comments um, about the fact that we need a little bit more time when there's joint meetings and perhaps consideration of slightly longer meetings because really um, when you're sitting with, with double or more the number of MPs in a meeting, it obviously takes double or more the amount of time to interrogate things. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Ryder. I will uh, appreciate if members can also talk to the presentation, agree with what has been presented or proposed to us. Uh, I think Esther, as she was presenting, she has highlighted issues that we must take decision on. Uh, on the table from page 23 downwards, uh, what I've also identified the issues of the, as I was still maintaining um, within our plan that uh, we, we would want to visit the borders, uh, Mozambique and uh, Zim, uh, as we discussed uh, previously. Uh, let's also, as we make these additions, let's also uh, talk to the presentation. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Karim, sir. Yeah, hey, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, um, there are many of these things I've said before, and so you'll forgive me because it, it, it does seem the majority don't agree with what I say, which is fine. I'm merely a chair of one of the two committees, so we should just resolve them. Uh, but in doing so, we can't undermine the very money bills act that we've passed. So I also think that where people are proposing things, as they often do in these committees, that go against the Money Bills Act, I think it's time now they brought amendments to it. Now we have Frank Jenkins here, and I think he should come in. So the first is, as I understand it, uh, Esther sent off, or Nkuleko did maybe, uh, the Strat plan on Friday, as I know it. It's possible that the latest version came yesterday, but the Strat plan was distributed on Friday morning, as far as Friday afternoon, in Kuleko, as far as I know. Uh, so um, I don't think it's correct to say that, uh, you know, the plan only came out yesterday. I think the latest version came out. Secondly, we got to be fair. Pelelani at Lomo and Nkuleko, as comrades know, colleagues know, were stuck in the Northwest physically. So they were caught up with the Section 100 intervention issue in the Northwest. But Chairperson, can I plead that we don't cover the same issues over and over again? We're not going very much further than, we just add, you know, like it's like a tick box approach. We add new things, but we're not dealing with the fundamental issues. And it's now two years later. So we must take a decision we want to amend the Money Bills Act, if that's what we want to do. And Frank is here. So, you know, the first point is the contradictions between us when we say on the one hand that we do not want to be another NA, that we want to focus on provincial issues. And on the other hand, we want to do everything. Like it's not clear to me what the specific provincial dynamics are in the fiscal framework, actually. We all pay the same income tax, whether you come from Shindusi, as I do, or you come from Johannesburg, or you come from Cape Town, or wherever. If you look at the debt to GDP ratio, Comrade Chair, it's the same wherever you are in the country. So strictly speaking, where is the role of the NCOP? I think it's primarily in the division of revenue, really. That's where we have a crucial role to play. 
then we can't have our cake and eat it. So suddenly people will say we need to, um, like, you know, a matter we haven't resolved, even after the lawyers give us a statement twice, right, on processing bills. So I've decided, you know what, I'm not going to waste my time. I mean, you know, the same people who will tell you, yeah, when we have joint meetings, we need more time and so on. I uh, then decide suddenly they don't want to take part, be, uh, you know, in a, in a briefing on a bill. So look at where we are on the auditing profession bill and the tax bills. Because we now, you know, I've just felt like I'm wasting my time here. Yeah? I've got better things to do in life. Uh, as I understand it, Frank is here. Why don't we ask him? As far as I know, Frank, will you reply to this uh, chairperson? Let's get clarity. He's right here and people can question him and interrogate him and go to their own lawyers. As far as I know, Frank, maybe I got it wrong. After the debacle over the, what is it? Uh, the SAR people of an individual member on the NA side. You wrote us uh, a legal input on behalf of the unit. You shared it with your colleagues there. And then you did another one for the programming committee. Then I get sent it by a member who then says, yeah, you see, uh, we can't do this, which is, as I understand it, Frank, will you reply very specifically? There is nothing in the rules and norms of parliament, nor is it unconstitutional for the two committees on a section 75 bill, that's COF and CCOF, to actually have a joint briefing. And then secondly, for the NA to have a hearing and for the NCOP to be present. So it's an NA hearing, not at the expense of an NCOP hearing. It's an NA hearing with the presence of, is how I worded it. And my understanding is the majority of the powers that be of a joint meeting of some of the relevant office bearers of the NA and NCOP, which I was called to, agreed on that. But then there's still a view among some in our committee that we can't do that. So can you reply to that at some stage this morning? Because we cannot carry on, because that influences how much I have decided to, you know, you know, I've got better things to do. I can't badger uh, the NA committee. On the issue of bills, believe me, there's a new approach now by SCOF. We do not get, unless we badger them, the dates. That was never the case before. In the last term, the NCOP got, most times, not always, but certainly over the phone, uh, dates, tentative dates for bills. So it is very hard for us to draw up a program. So I'm saying to you that, look, you can do what you want. There's nothing more I can do. I have no authority over the NA committee chair or the uh, excellent secretariat staff. I have no authority. We don't get dates. I keep raising it. And what can I do? Um, so, so, you know, as far as we are concerned on the SCOF side, well, we do legislation. SICOA doesn't do that. So that depends a lot on the NA. There's no such thing as us getting bills unless they are formally tabled in the NCOP. Frank, maybe I'm going to respond to that. If a bill is tabled as almost all are, and Section 75s invariably and correctly are in the NA, there's nothing we can do. The issue that we should also think about is how bills are being processed. Because we're ending up as we have twice now with the auditing profession bill and the tax bills last year, with people coming to us on issues that they feel were not sufficiently given attention to on the NA side. And they expect us to do what we don't have the power to do. So, you know, we had that with Section 12J, we had that with Posad. So we can have all this tick box thing. If we don't deal with the issues and guide Esther and Pelilani Globo, we're going to be back here next year. So I really think it's time now that members proposed amendments to the Money Bills Act and so on. Then we're going to be very clear, colleagues. Colleagues, I agree there's need, we need for more time when we have joint meetings. But we can't even agree when it's appropriate to have joint meetings and when not. So that's the first issue. When do we suddenly have them and when don't we? Two things need to be taken into account. There seems to be some members in our committee who are reluctant to work with the NA committee. 
But on the other hand, we need to ask ourselves, Jefferson, why should the Reserve Bank governor, busy as he is, in a desperately critical situation that COVID-19 and the crisis before that has plunged the country in, why should he come and brief us and then brief the NA committee? Why? Why must he come and do it twice? So we have to work with the NA committee. But then, you know, I, I don't actually push in Kuleleko to do it anymore because then people will say, you know, there's so many inconsistencies what people are saying there, Jefferson. When are we going to resolve these issues? We're going around in circles two years later. Then I also feel, what is the relationship between these discussions and action? Ultimately, my own view is that it's not that we need more time. Uh, maybe a bit more time. It's that we need action. Take, for example, the Peter Meekin issue. It's four and a half months later, that's merely one recommendation. Treasury hasn't implemented it. I found some, an official, I found a parliamentary liaison officer. I wrote to them, I wrote back to Mr. Meekin, I'm going to give you all this. It's so boring, but I'm going to give you all this mail. If we do not get there this time, in Kuleleko, I'll just call the PG and let him know that we've taken a decision that by, if he doesn't give it by 11 at the latest, we're having a third item on the agenda and there's no such thing as choice. Frank must guide us. What are we going to do? The DG is the accounting officer. So on Thursday, we'll have to meet. Then on the issue of this whole strat plan, my feeling is it doesn't take account of capacity. What can we account? That's why it has to be a strat plan. Now, I, I understand that the officials are forced by a very rigid framework which becomes like a tick box approach. It becomes a technical approach to a person. A strat plan is a political thing. Esther and Pelelani have done their job very credibly. What are we doing with this? Mm. Except adding more tick box things. We're not, we're not actually being strategic. And a strat plan is strategic. Ultimately, it's a political thing. So, and it's a draft. There's no such thing, uh, Dave, uh, Dennis, that we're going to vote on it right now and adopt it. We can come back to it uh, through email exchanges and so on. But Comrade Chair, I think we're just being tick box, tick box, tick box ish, if, if you ask me. That's all we're doing in our discussion. What is our capacity? What is the value, for example, of, especially in COVID times and with limited resources, flying to Swane, spending so much of hours and so on, and meeting with the Reserve Bank, what are we going to ask them that's new compared to what we asked them two years late earlier? So can people who are making that proposal, can they tell us what is it that we cannot do in this era of digital technologies and virtual meetings the world over? We're never going back to the old era, you know, in the way we did. You know, I had an exchange. Comrade Chair, just let you know what a senior official of power, a senior politician in Parliament office bear and asked him, you know, do we really have to come even post COVID times, whatever that means, because these pandemics are yet to stay in different forms. What, Jefferson, what are we going to do? Shouldn't we come to Parliament when it's SONA and the budget and key times physically? And for the rest of the time, do we want to waste so much of money on flights? and officials staying overnight. Can't we think strategically about this? Is that maybe half the time, in the NCOP, the provincial chairs and the uh, uh, committees come up, they fly up, they stay the night before, they, they stay, uh, they, the air flights and all. Those are the things we, in what way is this a strat plan in the political sense? That's not Esther's job. It's not Pelelani's job, Jefferson. And I think I must accept major responsibility for failure. I don't think I communicated sufficiently to you, Comrade Chair, what the aim was of getting the strat plan merged in the way. But fine, if it's so again. On the matter of the cryptocurrency, Dennis, we did, as Tikiledi will tell you, have an initial discussion. If you look at our exit report, we we actually we actually said that the incoming committee needs to focus on cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and you know, uh, banks without bricks and mortar. And it's even linked to our, uh, what is it called? The transformation of the financial sector report. The chairperson, you'll remember we had one sitting on it and many of us felt we didn't know enough. 
So I agree with you, Dennis. But again, should we invite the stakeholders concerned, Treasury, the Reserve Bank, the FSA, and then they go to the NA committee as well? So I think one of the things we need to think through strategically is writing to the chair of the NA committee and saying, these are the five things we think we should do jointly. Then we pass the fiscal framework, Chairperson. In my view, it's the NA that mainly, it's nothing provincial there, right? It's mainly the NA that must do it. And that's what used to happen in the last five year term. And that what, that's what does happen. But if members want to join those meetings, it's ten there's hour. something, sorry. I don't know what's going on. Chairperson, I'll stop, but you know what? I just feel, can we just be strategic politically in what we do it, instead of being tick -bock, tick bockish? And can we get clarity on this issue? So first thing I'd like to be chairperson is if we ask Frank whether it's wrong in saying very quickly again, one, there is nothing that prevents the both committees, NA and NCOP on a section 75 will having a joint briefing. Then secondly, the N NCOP committee attending an NA public hearing because we have our separate one. Even if just to observe, what is wrong with that? Please clarify, Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable um, Karim. I think before I request the uh, advocate Frank to come in, uh, in the chat group, um, Honorable Ryder have said something that when you started, he couldn't hear what you were saying. Uh, maybe I can try to to say because I think what the uh, Honorable Karim was saying, he was trying to of a uh, time uh, as a matter of agency that uh, you only received the the document yesterday, and what what he find is that uh, the documents initially were sent on Friday afternoon. Uh, what might have been sent yesterday is the final or the refined uh, document. I think that's where he started. Uh, Honorable, uh, um, sorry, Advocate uh, Jenkins, please come in. Good morning, Honorable Chairperson. Chair, one matter before he comes in. Uh, this is only fair to our excellent committee secretary. Not that you don't have an excellent committee. You sent a note to say the report was sent to MPs on Friday at 23.51, correct. Yes, yes, comrade. Honorable Karim, are you still continuing? No, I just want to report that uh, uh, Inkololeko says that the uh, first draft was sent to members at 23.51 on Friday. Okay. I think it's the same Following thing, up on just the point, an emphasis. Thank you so much. Uh, advocate? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning. Good morning, hon honorable members and colleagues. Chair, the legal opinion that was referred to by honorable Karim that was, yes, prepared in relation to the um, Reserve Bank Amendment Bill. And it just refers to rules. I can distribute that again if, if members would like to see it. It refers to rules mainly on the NA side, but it's similar rules on the NCOP side that allows committees to confer. Um, in other words, to receive a briefing, and that's the uh, gist of the opinion, to see, receive briefings um, and to conduct public hearings, but to consider the bill separately. And we're talking about uh, NA and NCOP committees in the opinion. So in terms of the rules, there's nothing untoward or nothing in, uh, inconsistent with the constitution um, to, for NA and NCOP committees to confer, uh, to receive briefings and to participate or to, to do the public participation. And similarly, if one look at the rules uh, of the two houses, committees are in charge of how they proceed with doing their work. So. Um, Chair, from our side of the administration, we always try to do things uh, efficiently and with the, with the budget cuts to Parliament as well. We're trying to make it effective as well. So, Chair, well, I should have put it the other way around. So, joint meetings sometimes do work better. 
um, the time issues and so forth, we can't always solve that. And I, I do take note of it. But legally, Chair, there's nothing wrong with, with doing that. When it comes to 75 legislation, I don't deal with that in the opinion. The Constitution even provides that there should be rules for joint meetings between the NA and NCOP when we're dealing with Section 75 legislation. And that's something that hasn't been implemented, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, um, since 1997 when the Constitution came into effect. So it is really not a strange animal for the Constitution or the rules for committees to meet jointly. But when there are decisions to be taken and when there's deliberations even, the, the, the position is that the committees then sit by themselves because there's a reason why a committee is, is like that, Chairperson. So um, I can go into details if members would like, Chair, uh, or if you, on your guidance. Thank you. Chairperson, I, Chairperson, just to come in as a co-chair, right? Uh, because we're co-chairing, but you're the primary chairperson, with due respect. You see, we have never done that. Uh, Frank is right. We have never sat on a 75 bill and started looking at it clause by clause and even taking part in the report of an NA committee. Actually, you will recall the one incident when Mr. Njadu wanted to go. And I sent a note through the email box and to him, I think, through the WhatsApp and said, yes, you can go but you can't participate and you're not a committee. And I didn't go to that meeting. Sometimes I have just observed and I've never said a word when it's been uh, virtual, but I've never physically gone uh, because one doesn't have a time. So we can't, Frank is right. We can't start processing it clause by clause, not even in the COVID circumstances. So he's absolutely right. I should have made that qualification. But Comrade Chair, I, I think, you know, if people want to change the rules and the constitution, they must do that until the legal services units memo on this matter is found to be unconstitutional, illegal, I think it was just abide by the very rules and the very law we've passed. Thank you. Advocate, you ask if uh, members allow you to go in depth in terms of what you were explaining. I don't know how much time will you need. Uh, chair, because I, I will prefer you to. Ma'am, if, if, if I go up, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm waiting on your instructions, ma'am. I mean, if, if, if you give me two or okay. three minutes. I wanted to know what, what, how much time you need. Ma'am, oh, I can do it fine. in three minutes. It's fine. Yeah. I think it's better to go in depth. It's fine. It's fine. You can go on. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Um, I think Mandy, you can go on, uh, advocate. Thank you. Can Can you hear me, ma'am? Is everything okay? Yes, we can yeah, hear you. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I think, ma'am, the principle that committees can meet uh, and can confer. The rules use the word confer. That is there. That's point one I want to make. The second point, between NA and NCOP committees, there's no problem with conferring. Both the NA and NCOP rules allow it. Uh, both the rules set out the legislative process. And the understanding on the interpretation of those rules is that when it comes to public hearings and when it comes to briefings from departments, NA and NCOP committees can confer. Ma'am, if I want to go into detail then, we go to the Money Bills Act. The Money Bills Act require joint meetings or joint sittings at times, as, as the Act calls. And, and the rules make provision for that. The rules have been aligned uh, a few years ago to make provision for those meetings. Um, and that is now specifically with in regard to the budgetary bills, um, the tax bills, and so forth, ma'am. So there is also no problem with it. Um, the, the, Issue where the line is drawn, as Mr. Karim has said, is when there's deliberations on legislation and then the decision making. And the last thing I wanted to say, ma'am, and that is just something I, I, I say as an administrator, the constitution, if members do want to look at it, at section 45, requires that there are joint rules for joint meetings when we're considering section 75 and 74 bills. So that I'm mentioning not that we must do something about it today, but that it, in the constitution envisaged that when we're dealing with 75 processes, it might be more efficient and effective for committees to sit together. So just, it's not an unconstitutional uh, idea uh, of, of processing legislation. And that's, that's what I wanted to end with. Thank you. 
thank you, Advocate. I see a hand of Honorable Ryder. But thank uh, you very much, from my recollection, I think we, as a committee, we don't uh, say it's wrong to have joint meetings. From what I, I had, subject to correction. The members are saying, as much as we know that uh, we will be required sometimes and also to save time, and we know it's constitutional uh, 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 supported to have joint meetings. What their concern is, is time allocated, that they don't have enough time to can uh, deliberate on the issues. Uh, I also want us to talk to, uh, initially I said, I want us to talk to what has been presented, uh, but also talk to what uh, Honorable Karim have, has uh, spoken as a strategic plan, uh, plan session. Honorable Ryder, can come in. Thank you very much, Chair. Chair, that's actually why I raised my hand, is because when, when Honorable Karim came in the second time, he said, it's clear that the majority disagrees with my position, uh, or with his position, okay? And I wasn't sure that I'd, I'd, I'd heard what he'd said originally, and I wasn't sure what he was assuming we had disagreed with. So perhaps if we can ask him for some clarity on that, please, because uh you know if yeah it's, it's important that we're on the same page and if he feels he's been disagreed with i think it's it's important that we understand what we're disagreeing with because i i'm not sure that i've got a a, a thrust of 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 what we were after there on, on the joint committee meetings you know i don't want to belabor the point i think it's been i think it's been been reasonably well discussed uh you know i do think that there are bills where joint committee meetings and joint briefings are justified. Uh, money bills with the majority of them, certainly. Um, there are other wild ideas that get thrown out uh, that perhaps joint committees are not justified on having. And certainly the one that, that, that I took umbrage to being involved in early on last year, uh, there was no urgency on it. Um, and I don't think that a joint committee meeting was justified in that instance. We can argue the merits of that. It'll be a point of debate from here until kingdom come. I do believe that there certainly is benefit to having joint meetings um, when we have briefings from uh, the Minister of Finance on the budget, when we have briefings um, um, from PBO, from the FFC on things like the fiscal framework, et cetera. I think it's massively useful to have those joint meetings uh, on those bills where we are absolutely advocate Jenkins conferring and discussing the issues. Um, and and I, I think, you know, certainly the limited time that we are given to process those bills definitely necessitates uh, joint meetings um, and, 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 and some joint discussions. Um, but certainly the point has been well made uh, when it comes to our deliberations on the contents of the bill, um, those must be separate. And, and as long as we adhere to that, I'm reasonably happy. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Ryder. Honorable Karim, can you step in, please, to clarify? Chairperson, I don't see much value in doing so. Thank you. I've been with Mr. Ryder for close to an hour on the one occasion, and then I spent many hours wasting my time in trying to understand what was wrong with what Frank Jenkins was doing. I consulted with an external lawyer. I'm not going to go through that. Chairperson, I'm not responding to Dennis. He knows exactly what happened. And really, even now, it's inconsistent. Either you abide by the rules and the norms, or you don't. You can't uh, have your cake and eat it. You can't say, on some bills, I will come in. On other bills, I won't. It's not his decision to make. The majority must decide. And we will do so on the basis. I'm sorry I had to rush out because somebody came. And <clears throat> I had to run back, deliver. Uh, item that was booked online and didn't send me an SMS to say it's going to be delivered now. It is expected tomorrow. Okay, so here we are, Chairperson. There's a simple thing here. Whoever it is, they must abide by the rules and norms and what the legislation and constitution says. You can't decide for yourself. And if you do, well, that's an individual decision, Chairperson. I don't think we should have a long discussion. I would like to say, without voting, that we just accept Frank Jenkins' 
legal interpretation, which is not just his, it's the entire legal services unit. If I understand it correctly, it was done for the programming committee of the chief whips or something. And so that's what they abide by. That's all. It's as simple as that. There's no debate about it. There has to be another legal opinion to challenge that. And until that happens, let's just abide by what he says. Uh, uh, not he, the unit says. And where, where we feel, as a majority, that is Section 75 or 76 bill, we want a joint sitting because of the tremendous advantages of having it, because then we know what the original bill was and whether we agree or disagree with what the NA committee say. I've been through all of this, Chairperson. No, man, there's no point. You know, I'm not going to come in chair with due respect. I've spoken for a long time. I shan't be raising these things again because it's obvious the majority do not agree with me and I can't be breaking my head against a brick wall. It's fine. Let's just carry on the way we are. And let's just abide by the rules and norms or change the money bills act. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Karim, I think um, I'll come into the point that we have just raised to say majority of uh, uh, the people on my head cannot be seen now. Oh. I just switch off my, my video. The chairperson, maybe a computer or something. It sometimes happens to me. If you move your computer, if you have it in the front, I notice, you know, your full face appears again. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know enough. Now, there you are. We can see I, you now. I just did that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Honorable Karim, I think uh, the statement that says majority of uh, the members do not agree with you it's uh, something that needs to be corrected because exactly what uh, uh, advocates have said. Several times we have uh, uh, asked him in the meeting to clarify, and that's what we have been doing. That when we have joint meetings and there are decisions to be taken in terms of uh, uh, adoption of the reports and other things and finalization, we separate the NA committee and uh, the, 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 the select committee on on uh, appropriate um, on, on on in the in the NCOP, we do that independently and uh, separately. Uh, that's what he has been. He is, he is, he is, we have been doing as he has been uh, advising us. So I'm trying to locate, in terms of the discussion as to where is the disagreement actually and you clearly said that uh, we cannot pick and choose which ones we want to to be to joined and which ones can't be joined even though uh, the legislation uh, allows us to have them and we also consider other things other than what the legislation is saying to save time because sometimes it's difficult to get uh, 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 those stakeholders or the people who are responsible to come and do presentation to different meetings. And that is what we have also uh, done today to take a decision to have a joint uh, a, a strategic planning. So um, I want I want I want to correct that uh, notion to say majority of us don't agree with you because I have not realized that. Uh, can members, I want us to, to wrap up uh, if members are fine with the discussions because we have now moved uh, beyond an hour. Uh, if members still want to talk to the issues, uh, apart from what we, want to, we wanted to raise and we have raised them, I requested that uh, we also entertain what is in the third plan document. Chairperson, sorry, uh, yeah, one minute. Five. Chairperson, can I yes, raise sir. one issue? Uh, look, basically, I didn't say we disagree yes. on the issue of processing bills together. That is not a matter of choice, as I said. That's not the issue. On that, we have no choice. As I said, unless we go to the courts and find that the legal services unit is wrong, we must just abide by what they say and not choose and, and pick where we want to get involved with the NA and where we don't want to. Firstly, 
Sakhi, I'm talking about the other issues I've raised, which have been raised for two years now, about not becoming another NA committee, recognizing that our main role is to look at provincial and local issues in the national terrain, and actually taking into account of our capacity and being productive. All other issues I raised, and I've been raising in different forms for 24 months, and I'm going to now withdraw, because those are the issues I'm saying that we keep repeating, and I, I accept now, uh, that, you know, there isn't currency for it within the majority. So we'll continue the approach we currently have. I'm fine with that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Karim. Members, can we, are you fine with the presentation, our document as a straight plan document? Can you step off the item and go to the next item, which is appropriations? Can I get a guidance from the members? You can proceed, Jane. So silence. Who's that? Okay, Honorable State. We yes, we may proceed. Honorable Chairperson, we, we may proceed. Honorable Chairperson. Let's proceed, Jane. Is that what uh, Honorable? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Members. Um, Honorable Karim, are you fine, the coach person? Yes, as I we said, can we can move need to, to the next uh, yeah, item. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jomo, can you start with the appropriations presentation? Uh, I think we have realized, Honorable Karim, that uh, my, it says again, your internet connection is unstable. I was kicked off twice, but I was able to come in back quickly. If it happens, please uh, help me. Yeah, I know. Uh, Mr. Gamo? Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, good morning, honorable members, and good morning, colleagues. Um, Chair, can you hear me clearly? I can't see. I can't see your document. Um, no, no, I'll fly it. I'll fly the okay, document. Your I just document? wanted to make sure that I just wanted to make sure screen? that I'm vi I'm visible first, because I'm in Umsundozi and uh, okay. the bandwidth is a bit of a problem this side. So I've also been no, you are. out uh, twice <laughs> in a row. Oh, so you're chair. my homeboy. Oh, yes, oh. I'm in Umsundozi today. So the bandwidth is a bit of a problem. Um, um, let me fly it uh, in the document, Chair. I've prepared the summary thank you, thank you. Uh, of the of the key issues that are contained in the um, APP. Um, uh -huh. Over and above the the draft APP, which we have consolidated as a team with 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 Esther, but I I thought it would be important, Chair. Uh, to prepare a summary of performance assessment for the committee uh, that deals with the thrust of the issues that are contained in the APP um, so that uh, we avoid bombarding members with a, a lot of information. Uh, they can read the APP uh, uh, during their own time, but this summary outlines or tees out critical issues which I will talk to in, in my presentation chair. Uh, I will not uh, go through the, the, the introduction and background. Um, the mandate of the committee, uh, I will also not go through that because it doesn't change as, as outlined in the legislation. Um, so I want to say, uh, I will start with the point three, which gives the perspective on the complete strategic plan and amendment thereof. Chair. Chair, the issue around the Commissary Plan, Chair, uh, my belief and my view is that it should be treated as a, a, a conversation amongst the members of the committee, looking back at a, the performance of the committee since the inception a, of the five-year plan, since the committee started in 2019, 2020 look back, review what has been happening, and, and, and going forward, what is it that we can improve? What is it that the committee can do better? What are the things that we did not do good? And, 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 and so forth. So, so, so for me, 
uh, the, the strategic planning should be a, 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 a that kind of a reflection as opposed to, to, to some. Of course, the support, us as support staff, we assist the committee in identifying some of the key issues that members will then deliberate on as they reflect. That's our role. Then eventually we've got to collate all those deliberations and all those issues and consolidate them into a final document. But what we have done uh, uh, this time around, we've produced a document prior to the deliberation. This document is supposed to be an outcome of the deliberation under normal circumstances, but a, a, a based on the guidance uh, of the co-chairs, we were able to produce proactively the draft document before the deliberations. Now, here is a document, members need to deliberate on it and, and, and give us their input um, and, and, and so that we can go back and consolidate. So point three deals with that perspective of the start plan. It, 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 the start plan, since it was adopted in 2019, 2020, it does not change, it remains the same. We only review it through the APP on an annual basis. The threat plan, why is it, it is difficult to change, to chop and change it, because it takes into account some of the documents, key documents that are standard that do not change a, a for the next five years, but they get reviewed on an annual basis. That will be your parliamentary uh, five year strategic plan, one, two, that will be your medium term strategic framework uh, of government, which in, in a sense is an implementation plan of the national development plan. It also takes into account the objectives of the NDP. It takes into account the committee legacy report, the issues that are outlined by the, the last a, a, a committee. The policy priorities is outlined in the SONA. It also takes into account the NCOP strategic planning document, which chair, I must indicate chair and emphasize this point that this document uh, has been a problem for us to access it. The NCOP will go into a straight plan to a particular hotel deliberate on the state plan issues. Um, 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 and that uh, state plan should produce a document that will guide these committees uh, to do their own planning. But we find that it, it becomes a hassle and it becomes difficult to obtain that document that emerged from the NCOP state planning, state planning session. I'm not sure if Esther, Esther on, his, on his side had obtained that document, but from, but from our side as appropriation, we've not been able to get that document. Yeah. Uh, chair, uh, the fourth, the fourth uh, point, Chair, deals with what, what have we achieved, what has the committee achieved in the 2020-21 annual performance plan, Chair? Of course, the processing of, of, of money bills was achieved. Uh, we know that the dividend revenue bill was passed, the appropriations bill was also passed, but because the year uh, 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 under review uh, was not a normal year, due to the advent of COVID-19, uh, the committee had to do extra bit where a supplementary appropriations bill was also tabled, where a, a division of revenue amendment bill and, and, and adjusted appropriation was done in June, uh, where the division of revenue second amendment bill also was also tabled and had to be adopted. So, 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 so the, the, the year 2020-2019, what has been a bit of an, of, an, of an abnormal year where committee saw itself dealing with more set of bills before it uh, compared to, as compared to, to other years. Of course, Chair, um, those bills have, been, have gone through hearings um, and, and submissions by uh, public uh, have, has been done. The submissions by stakeholders, your FFC, your PBO, your SALGA, and many others have also, has, have also been achieved. The, the public participation has been the thrust of the committee's operation. We, 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 we have not had a situation where the bill has been passed without engaging in the public. We, 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 we also derive a number of issues and recommendations, findings in those public participation. Uh, for instance, if I can take a, a typical example, make a typical example, there's a recommendation also chair that we've made uh, uh, around the social relief grant, where the committee urged National Treasury to extend the lifespan of the social relief grant. That recommendation, Chair, had emanated from the public uh, participation or public submission, if I can put it that way. So uh, we are trying, Chair, to make sure that the, the, the public participation brings meaning into the work of the committee 
as, as, as we process all the bills so that we don't necessarily wrap a stamp um, uh, bills as they are. And those recommendations that we make in each and every report where the minister responds to those recommendations it, in each and every budget review that he tables before parliament. The FFC recommendations have been considered uh, 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 for the Division of Revenue Bill that will be tabled in the following year. We have looked at that, although we have not done enough as a committee, but that exercise has been done. Uh, the India monitoring, which is part of the mandate of the committee also, uh, 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 India monitoring on spending uh, and, 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 and other specific issues uh, with budget implications as per the money bills requires us. Uh, we, 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 we have looked at the agriculture sector where a, a, a disaster management issues. Uh, also again, Chair, this issue emanated from the recommendations and the very lengthy deliberations of the committee during the adoption of the Division of Revenue Bill and the Appropriations Bill. And therefore we saw it fit, Chair, to schedule the meeting to deal with this issue decisively uh, as a committee. Um, Chair, the committee has also looked at uh, the conditional grant expenditure on agriculture, Chair, being guided by chair, a criteria that uh, because we are a committee that deals with a, a number of provinces, a number of municipalities and provinces have for different sector departments. So you can call all of them at a go. And therefore the criteria that we developed uh, is such that it looks at the worst case scenario uh, of expenditure, uh, the worst case scenario of, condition, of expenditure on conditional grants, and, and, and performance. So in that, we look at both the expenditure and also the non-expenditure uh, information, which is performance information. I must also indicate here, uh, also on this one again, and highlight the fact that the performance information has been a challenge. Obtaining performance information to substantiate the expenditure that reflects on the expenditure reports is tabled by National Treasury through Section 32 report or through Section 71 report has been a challenge. We have tried our level best to come up with a template which guides the National Treasury and other departments or provinces to actually say when they table or when they submit the expenditure report on a quarterly basis before this committee, this is what they need to follow, which creates some sort of a balancing act on what has been spent and what has been achieved. It's always difficult to, 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 to assume what has been achieved when you only look at the expenditure figures. So it's important to supplement that with the performance information, Chair. But it has been a challenge. The appointment of the PBO director, my colleague Exa has dealt with. Some of these issues are overlapping because it's, it's, it's basically one committee deals with the one more or the same issues. Uh, the appointment of the director of the PBO has been achieved, which is the issue, Chair, that emanated from the uh, legacy report of the committee. Um, and as I was indicating earlier on that the review or the threat plan uh, uh, document is a combination of various key documents that seeks to consolidate all the important issues that are in line or aligned to the mandate of the committee. The next page. Um, uh, part of the issues also here uh, that was raised by our legacy report and which was raised by the committee uh, during its threat plan in 2019, very robustly was the resolution tracking report, uh, resolution tracking mechanism in a way. We developed the resolution tracking mechanism up to date. We have shared quite a number of, um, some couple of reports with the committee, which emanate from the resolution tracking mechanisms where the Minister of Finance respond on issues that the committee has raised as recommendations in each and every single report of the Division of Revenue Bill, Division of Revenue Amendment Bill, and as well as the Division of Revenue Second Amendment Bill, which was the case um, uh, last year. So this report gives the responses uh, uh, to each recommendation. However, there are some recommendations that will ordinarily be a sector-based recommendations. Those recommendations, the Minister of Finance will refer, will always refer them to his colleagues, other ministers. So if members look at those reports, uh, a, 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 and, and, and read those, recommend, those responses, and they feel that they are not satisfied with the response that is actually uh, uh, expressed by the Minister of Finance, 
they are at liberty to identify those responses, single them out, and either ask the committee secretariat to write back to the minister and get more clarity on a particular uh, issue or specific issue, or they can invite the minister to give clarity, further clarity on certain responses. Uh, 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 it's, it's another form of ensuring that the executive begins to take the work of the committee seriously. So that when they respond in the near future, they know that uh, uh, the committee scrutinizes the responses and also further makes certain follow-ups. The dissemination of information by committee support staff has been done, which is part of the things that we had highlighted in our strategy plan has been done. And, and from my recollection, uh, most of the documents or most of the meeting have said with documents being circulated before time. Uh, and, 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 and apologies if honorable members did not get the, uh, the APP, the revised APP uh, on time this time around. Um, um, uh, but we, we always try our level best uh, to, to, to do that. The collaborative engagement with other committees uh, has been done. We have uh, met jointly <laughs> with, with the NA committees uh, uh, to deal with budget issues as, as a requirement of the legislation that establishes this committee. Uh, we have not only, only met with the NA committee jointly, but we have also extended as the appropriation uh, the invitation to the provincial uh, counterparts of the committee to try and broaden the scope and broaden the horizon of engagement and really live up to a promise of a collaborative work that is outlined in the draft APP and also in the state plan. Uh, this has been a, 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 a very meaningful engagement as it has brought in a lot of issues that provinces have raised, which at a national level, you will not ordinarily be able to, to, to be exposed on as, 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 as an NCOP or as an NA, if I can put it that way. But provincial committees are able to pick up those issues and, and, and submit them. And we really do take cue in some of the issues in compiling our report and filter them in, into, the, into the recommendations. And the Treasury has also responded into those issues. Provincial Treasury has responded into, in some of those issues and we've shared those documents with the committee members. The capacity building, there was a workshop that was held with the National Treasury when the National Treasury took the committee through the whole budget process and also even including the budget adjustment process, the medium temperature process statement, the instruments, the critical provisions of the Public Finance Management Act that are also a, 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 a critical in adjusting the budget and so forth. And that was part of the capacity building exercise. The FFC also during the induction uh, has actually outlined and, and articulated some of the issues, including their mandate and some of the things that the committee uh, uh, needed to understand uh, uh, in forging a proper or a meaningful relationship between the committee and, and FFC. The SALCA has also done the same. Uh, these are the key stakeholders. Uh, the PPO engages with the committee on a regular basis. These are the key stakeholders, a uh, chair, that uh, uh, we, we need really to, to make sure that uh, their input is taken on board and is taken very seriously as they contribute meaningfully into the, into the report of the committee. And if they're not contributing meaningfully, you must not be shy chair, to say to them, look, FFC, or look, Salga, uh, or look, people, we don't think that you are giving us a, a meaningful input on this issue. What is your view around these issues uh, as per the National Treasury has, has tabled some of the bills? As an independent body, you should be able to tell us as the committee of parliament that uh, passing this bill uh, without engaging on some of the things uh, that we need to engage uh, will not be a justice. So that's the role of these independent bodies as, 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 as stakeholders also of the committee. They need to bring what we call a meaningful and, 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 and open an eye of, uh, uh, um, um, for the committee to see things beyond what National Treasury is saying. What are the proposed interventions or proposed improvement to strengthen the committee work going forward? Um, so, uh, I believe that uh, and members will agree with me that since we started uh, the work of the committee in 2019-2020, in, in, in uh, the committee's focus, the main focus of the committee has been placed solely on a uh, processing budget bills. It has been only about bills that are being processed. Uh, we have 
allocated a very little time on issues around oversight in a monitoring where you look at a how much has been spent on a quarterly basis by a certain provincial departments, how much has been spent on quarterly basis by certain municipalities in the form of conditional grants. And, 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 and I believe that uh, uh, those engagements are a beginning and, and they present a very good platform for committee members to can assess the whole picture of how resources of the of the of the state are being utilized so that in 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 the process of of dealing with the budget bills when the time comes members are able to articulate as they have observed the dynamics of expenditure during the in year monitoring articulate what is it that they believe should be a concrete finding what is it they believe should be a concrete re recommendation for the committee because chair if 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 chair we do not have this in the monitoring, we 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 are we are forced to make recommendations on the spot based on what the treasury, the FFC, PPO, and other people have submitted right there during the process, without having a view or a holistic picture of what has happened throughout the year. So I think chair, these in the monitoring that I'm talking about are quite critical. They're very much important to make sure that it, 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 they serve as a builder for you to consolidate some of the recommendations that you need to articulate during the, the and engage with the budget process. Uh, oversight visits, uh, we have not done much uh, and, and, and because understandably so of the COVID-19, but we believe that uh, with the have vaccine that has been, has been found, as uh, things will, will begin to stabilize and, 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 and somehow get back to, to, normal, to normality, then we'll be able to identify oversight visits to municipality projects and to provincial projects where conditional grants are being spent. And, and those oversight visits are also very critical because they form part and parcel of your fact-finding mission on what is it that the, the departments are presenting, the self-treasury is presenting, and, and, and compare that with what you have seen on the ground. And that completes the picture of your oversight. You are able to engage with the budget uh, uh, bills better with that understanding. Honorable Karim was saying that the Division of Revenue Bill is a critical legislation. I couldn't agree more with that. But if you have not done any site visits, uh, because the Division of Revenue Bill consists of political grants as well, where projects are being implemented via those allocations. They, it's important, so it's important to also go down on the ground and see what is it and how these grants are being spent. So what sort of dynamics are being picked up on the ground, which will inform your thinking and your view around a, a engagement with the Divinity of Revenue Bill. Engagement with the FFC recommendations, um, uh, 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 Chair, like I said earlier on, the committee has, enga has engaged with FFC. However, I believe that uh, uh, the committee has not done enough on this one again, uh, because they, they, we have not invited uh, departments that are affected by those recommendations. It normally, ordinarily, or in the previous terms, the committee used to invite when the FFC is here to present its report on the recommendations of the revenue bill to be tabled, the committee will then follow that up with a session, a, a, a inviting departments that are affected by the recommendations. The committee engages the department and asks if those departments that are affected by recommendations do agree with the recommendations or not. And if they do agree, a departments need to table what we call implementation plan of those recommendations. If they not agree, they then share their view with the committee as to why are they, are they not agreeing with the recommendation. Uh, the collaborative work with the sector committees, this uh, entirely depends on the programs of, of, of sector committees as well as our committee. Uh, as, like I said earlier on, committee has engaged with, in joint meetings with uh, uh, appropriations in the NA and also provincial counterparts, but we have not done enough 
in terms of engaging with sec other sector committees. As a result, that in itself, we run a risk of, of, of duplicating some of the issues that are raised by sector committees in their own little corner. We might also be raising in our little corner as the appropriations committee, not being aware that we're duplicating the work of the sector committees. But also we should be mindful, Chair, we should always at all material times be mindful that the appropriations committee deals with issues from the budget point of view. Meanwhile, the, 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 the sector committees will look at the issues from policy point of view. So the joint meetings with your sector committees, if programs allow, provide some sort of a benefit in terms of a synergic approach in dealing with the issues. Departments come to, to the appropriation committee, present, say something else, and they go to the portfolio or to the sector committee, they do the same presentation, but say something different because they know that these two committees are not talking to one another. But immediately you emerge, you, you, you emerge, you, 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 you share the, 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 the presentation, you share the, some of the issues that are being raised, but you look specifically on budget implications and they look at policy. You are a, 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 a closing the gap where departments and the executive are able to say things that are not really a, 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 a consistent from one committee to another. So those joint meetings, those collaboration meeting, collaborative meetings with sector committees are quite important. They are quite encouraged uh, for the appropriations committee. Um, the the follow-ups, uh, we also need to improve uh, follow-ups on tracking, um, um, tracking mechanisms. Um, 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 there are recommendations that the minister will indicate more often than not to say, I've referred this committee to the sector minister. The committee can write again to that sector minister and make a follow-up with respect to a specific recommendation and get a response. And we are saying, Chair, again, the committee needs to start uh, looking beyond invite, just inviting the accounting officer when it conducts the in monitoring or a, 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 a quarterly a expenditure a meeting. A look beyond the inviting the accounting officer because the accounting officer is not the only person that drives a, 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 a some of the important issues that you may see appearing in the annual report of the department. And that also more often than not results in expenditure not, not moving. You've got what you call internal audit units. You've got what you call m and &E. So in that, you've got internal audit unit, for instance, is responsible for ensuring that there is adequate uh, internal controls in place. There is assurance and, 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 and also a, a, a red flags. Systems are put in place to make sure that there are early warning signs uh, in the department. And these things are adhered to. Compliance is also being emphasized. Now, uh, when you invite the head of the internal audit unit together with the, with, the, with, the, with the accounting officer and also the chairperson of the audit committee, you are in a way forcing the, the, the accounting officer to begin to take serious the recommendations of the, audit, of the audit committee and begin to take the work of the internal audit serious. Because we'll be saying to the chairperson of the audit committee and as well as the head of the audit unit, tell us what is it that you are doing in the department to assist this accounting officer to try and deal decisively with what we call irregular expenditure, the wasteful expenditure and fruitless expenditure, with unauthorized expenditure. Honorable uh, uh, Fanny Detroit always asks a question about irregular expenditure. The internal audit unit and, and the chairperson of the, of, the, of the audit committee will be in a position to give you details as to what is it that the department should be doing or is doing in ensuring that those systems are put in place to deal and to address those irregular expenditure. So in a way, we are forcing them to work together with the accounting office. And the accounting officer will begin to take them serious because there's a tendency, Chair, I must say, uh, both in departments and municipalities, where auditor, internal auditors, when they do their work, uh, they are not being taken serious by head of departments, right? There is a tendency also of not taking their recommendations into account. That's why when the AG comes, they begin to run around like headless, headless chicken, correcting things that should have been corrected when actually the internal auditor was there. That's why the AG will begin to say, okay, no, let's send back some of these financial statements. They've got some errors that need to be corrected. 
you ask yourself, the internal auditor has been there with the department for over a period of time. And the audit committee is also there as part of the gov gov governance, in, in, uh, governance structures of the department. Why are all these things not raised and addressed within, within, within the period at which the AG is not there? The AG, instead of taking these internal oversight bodies serious, they instead take the AG serious. They, internal auditors are there for a reason, to make sure that they do the work, they do the spade work so that the AG, when he comes at the end of the financial year, everything is smooth, runs smooth, and everything is in place. They just tick the box. The MNE, the MNE monitoring and evaluation chair, they are also there for a reason to make sure that there is what we call a, a performance improvement over time so that you don't see at the end of the financial year an annual report that says 99% uh, of the budget has been spent, but the performance uh, 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 the department has only achieved 40% of its performance target. So the MNE is there to make sure that. Uh, there's an alignment between uh, what you call your strategic plan in the department, your APP, as well as the MNE systems. And all programs have got what we call a built-in MNE system so that you are able to monitor on a daily basis what is going on, what is happening, and be able to feed back into the strategic uh, management uh, uh, where there's a need to correct the planning process. Feedback back into the planning process for corrections before uh, 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 it's, it's too late. So, so, so these two units, I'm mentioning them because they are quite critical for the executive to improve their own uh, performance and make sure that there's alignment between the budget spend as well as a, 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 the performance outcome. So if those two units can be functional, uh, can function very well and be taken serious, you will see a, a paradigm shift in terms of ensuring that there's a balance uh, between performance and the resources that are being spent. You are also forcing them to work together as a team and, and, and deal with that misalignment that often happens between the, 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 the resources utilized and the performance chair. We are also saying, Chair, I think chair, we, we need to start looking beyond the just the routine work uh, of the committee. Uh, 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 we need to consider looking at uh, Departments like DPMEs, which are producing also some of the reports that are cutting across government. Those reports um, 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 are quite helpful in that they look at national, they look at provincial, and also there are some of the also municipal uh, reports that are being produced by that same department. These reports, Chair, one of them is called the IMPACT, Management Performance Assessment Results Tool. That report, Chair, is very critical in outlining and identifying the root causes of poor performance that you'll often see at the end of the financial year in the annual report. That report uh, uh, looks at the four functional areas, which is a strategic management, which, which, which consists of the APP, the state plan, and the MNE. It, it looks at the governance and accountability uh, functional area is whether there is an internal audit, there is an audit unit, there is a prevention strategy in the department, uh, uh, and so forth and so forth. It also looks at the HR, whether the HR of the department does have what we call HR plan, are there policies and frameworks that are required by legislations, are they implemented correctly, and if not, what are the challenges? And it also looks at, finally, your supply chain and finance as well. Whether 32 days or sorry, 30 days payment, for instance, are being achieved, are being done. We know that in government, there's always a challenge around paying service providers on time. A, 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 and, and, and there's nothing that has been done to address that. They, they are no, there's no consequence management. In the past, the executive had actually a, appointed a task team at a ministerial level, uh, at a national level, to look into the 30 day payment uh, of invoices is an issue. And, 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 and we did see uh, in, the, in the fifth parliament, we did see a move uh, in some departments uh, where people started making sure that invoices are paid within 30 days. Where there was a move because national government had taken that matter very seriously. And I think if provinces and municipalities can start duplicating that same model and committee can make a recommendation to say, this is what we think you can 
do to address this issue of 30 day uh, uh, payment of invoices. It is a problem. It remains to be a problem. It, it, it affects the small businesses who are trying their level best to, to make ends meet. It also affects the employees of those uh, uh, businesses. It also affects overall the economy which is in desperate need of revenues from taxes, from taxes, uh, 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 from people and from companies and from employees. So if you don't pay them on time, uh, there is a ripple effect uh, uh, into the fiscal as well, because the budget that you have estimated uh, for a particular financial year is not going to be achieved because you have not paid back. So, so, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a self-defeat in a way, uh, kind, of, kind of an act. Uh, we also have the recommendations, uh, which in a sense, they are also uh, covering in a nutshell what, what, what I've discussed, Chair. Thank you very much, um, uh, Chair. Uh, but before, Chair, I close, I wanted to make this point, Chair. When I had members deliberating on the issue uh, uh, that was raised in the, in, the, in the previous session around the time allocation allocated for joint meetings, Chair, I, I, I have noted from my side the, the, the concern of members around this and also the, 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 the strain it, it causes around the deliberation during the, the joint meetings. However, Chair, from our side, there's very little that we can do because Parliament as an institution have allocated committees a three hour session for each and every meeting, irrespective of whether it's a joint meeting or it's, not, it's, it's a non joint meeting. A three hour is standard for everybody because also of the number of committees that we have and the limited capacity of the venues in parliament that we had. These three hours were there even before the, 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 the Zoom meeting. And maybe with the advent of the Zoom meeting, things might be a little bit probably uh, 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 flexible. I, I don't know. Uh, parliament will have to consider probably looking at those things. But what I wanted to say also is that if members feel that during the joint meeting, with the Minister of Finance, with the FFC, with the PPO, or with SALGA, they have not exhausted all their input that they wanted to exhaust. In their own meetings, where they are considering their reports, before they adopt those reports, there are deliberations that take place in their own meetings. The Minister of Treasury is always there. The FFC is always there. PPO is always there. SALGA will, will if there's an issue that affects them, will be there also. Members are at liberty to raise those issues uh, uh, with the respective stakeholders that they wanted to raise with during the joint meetings before the report is being, is being addressed. I understand the frustration of not having enough time to raise issues that you wanted to raise, but you can also use the, the, the meetings where the committee considers the report before it adopts to raise some of those issues. And then we'll take it from there. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, um, uh, for the for time for the for the time. Thank you, Mr. Jomo. Thank you for the presentation. Can members raise their hands and uh, indicate if they want to uh, get into the discussions on the presentation and input or make additions? I don't see any hand. Uh, Lubabalo, can you help me if there's indication? Members, can you hear me? Yes, Chair, we can hear you. Honorable and, uh, members, can. can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can we can you can you engage on the on the on the on the subject? The item on the agenda, please, can we engage honorable members? There are no hands on our side, Chairperson. Honorable members, I don't know what is the meaning of this. No hands. Nkululek, are you saying you have hands? No, Chair, I'm saying there are no hands. Okay, members, what is the meaning of this then? Does this mean that uh, the presentation has covered all the issues that you, you, want, you, you have been raising? We have made a correct assessment of the performance of the committee. 
um, and also you agree with the, what we propose needs to be done going forward. Jack? Or is there a problem of load sharing? Or not about to do it? Yeah, I think the presentation is straightforward. Um, no questions at this stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Ryder, it's unlike you. You must just speak. No, Chair. Then you know what? Uh, the tone of the meeting was noted earlier. I, I'll rather... Yeah, we'll move forward. Can you repeat what you said at the beginning? I said uh, the tone of the meeting was noted earlier. We can just move forward. Thank you. Yeah, but you sound skeptical. Just want to move forward. Unlike how <laughs> the, the uh, Honorable Detroit said, I'm going to go back to what you said it's in the chat. Hours. The tone. It's unlike you. You sound discouraged. And I don't want you guys to be discouraged. Uh, other honorable members, honorable Njadu, I saw you on the line, Zolani. Honorable Mkiva. Uh, Chairperson. Are you on the line? <laughs> I see that uh, yes, the Holy Spirit has, has really engulfed today's meeting. No one wants to talk. <laughs> we have all been sanitized by the Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> No, Chairperson, I don't have Amen. anything at this stage because I have been fully covered, especially when, when, when um, the, the aspirations of the people in rural communities are mainstreamed and covered in these presentations. I take a certain level of comfort. I, I therefore wish to say the presentations have covered us very well. And uh, I agree with the members then that uh, if we have no issues at this stage, we might as we might as uh, take that decision to move on and tackle other matters. Uh, we can save that time for other issues. Thank you so much, Jefferson. Thank you. Uh, we... Honorable Njadu. Is he not on the line? Is he not on the platform? Yes, Shabazin is not on the platform. Maybe he has been kicked out by the system. Okay. Again. Okay, Coach Chaperson, can you move? Uh, Chaperson, I, I have nothing to add. Um, uh, perhaps the only observation is, which is something I'm saying yet again, so I don't know about value, but I feel that as a whole, neither of our committees is sufficiently focusing on dealing with our oversight role as effectively and efficiently as we should. In other words, um, but what I liked about the latter input, what is a greater trust on, on the need to be more effective, on demanding more of National Treasury, I feel that uh, our committees, I can't speak for the NA side, obviously, but on the NCOP side, well, actually, my own view also of all four committees is that we aren't as efficient and effective and as rigorous as we should be. And what is good about the Appropriations Trust uh, Strat Plan is that it's demanding more of us. So I think that's correct. I, I think we need to be far more effective. And I think National Treasury gets away. Not least, I mean, this example of Mr. Meek, and I see the letter has now come through so that item falls away. But it required a threat of, you know, if need be, engaging with Frank, what do we do? And calling it a special meeting just with the DG. If you just look at that, the amount of work it requires from a chair of a committee, the thing that people don't seem to understand in the committee of how much work chairs have to do offline to get um, decisions taken by the committee often as a whole, especially on the NCOP side where we, influenced more by provincial dynamics than party political dynamics. But here are two issues that we need to think about. The one is none of us in all the parties I can think of finds the right balance between our loyalties and identities and commitment to the policies and principles and programs of our respective parties in the NCOP. And on the other hand, recognizing that whichever party we come from, say, for example, my province KZN, 
we have a lot in common because our problems, especially on appropriations, division of revenue, for example, and to a lesser extent on appropriations, not so much in fiscal framework as I've been trying to communicate, are provincially influenced. So how do you find the right balance between the two? So for example, I can leave that example out because I don't want to be controversial. Uh, okay, so I'm saying that that's the second challenge. The third is when you talk of capacity, it's capacity at various levels. In other words, our capacity as a committee, as a whole, meaning how much can we do and can't we do? We don't, you see, if we have a strat plan, the first thing, as you know, Comrade Chair, you and I are veterans, if you like, there may be others around. We talk of, you know, the balance of forces, you look at the material circumstances, then you devise a strat plan. Now, that's a political uh, decision you make. And it's not party political. In all forms, different political parties do the same thing. You work out, for example, what is it you can do based on your capacity and resources. So there isn't enough of that. So, for example, one of the key things that Pelelani does refer to is the number of hours we have. Okay, let's ignore for now we're stuck with the bandwidth problem that you referred to, right? Which is that you're stuck with a three-hour schedule because there's so many committees and so limited bandwidth or limited bandwidth. Now, the question then is, if we have so many things a year, if you take Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, right? even if we used every Friday, how much can we actually do? We're not looking at those sort of issues. So what we have is a strat plan that ends up being, it's got nothing to do with the staff members, with us as politicians. Uh, in other words, are, are, are we really ending up with a shopping list? Right, so you have the same issues as you had even from 2017, some of them, right? On the SCOF side. So what I'm saying, uh, my friend, on, on the SCOF side, what I'm saying basically is, I think next time around, as chairs, we should play a more facilitating role, or we should appoint maybe two members, one from CCOF, one from SECOA, to facilitate or bring in an independent expert, facilitate and say, okay, these are the number of hours you have in an average year. These are the limited resources you have, but within it, what can you do? This is your capacity, right? Otherwise, we just go through like uh, what I feel are motions. You know, we, we do things which we think is the correct thing to do and we feel good about it maybe, but what is the productivity of the activity we're doing? Now, parliament has been shaken like the whole world has been by COVID-19. Are we sufficiently appropriating the world that we are now in and the world that is looming for us? I don't think so. There isn't enough of a recognition of how can we use digital technologies more effectively? How? For example, in a particular structure I come from, and you do too, they speak of this year as being the year of mass activism, just to take an example. So some of us raise the issue. What do you mean by mass activism when you can't get people out on the streets? You can't have thousands upon thousands or hundreds of thousands. You can't. COVID doesn't allow it, right? So doesn't it mean we have to think of new ways of popular mobilization? In other words, how can we, bearing in mind that the poor and disadvantaged have no data, how can we, all political organizations the world over, right, are talking about changing the way they operate. Now there's an election coming up. I don't know how we're going to do it. How are we going to nominate our candidates and have list conferences? And I know the DA does it differently, but let's take an average part, right, with considerable uh, uh, branch-oriented, you know, we don't have like a, like a, like a committee that, that, that actually invites applications and you know, reviews it. We actually have branch meetings. I'm sure other parties do as well. How do you do all of that? So in a similar vein, is our committee, are both of our committees doing enough to think through is how do you operate in oversight and other ways in a digitalized world, which we're not going to like forego even after every South African as if that's ever going to happen has, a, a, has in fact a vaccination. So that's what I think are some of the issues that we need to facilitate decision-making on next year this time. And once again, Comrade Chair, I think we all agree this should be done at the end of January, early February. And then there are things like this, Comrade Chair, I forgot to raise this. Now, Parliament decided, the NCOP has decided they're going to have several sittings from 10 a.m. You recall, the chairs were called to the draft program. 
Can we plead with both the committee secretaries, or three of them, that they look at Parliament's program? Already we got a clash on, I think, the fourth, in Kulilek reminded me, because from 10 o'clock we're meeting, I think, on some strategic uh, plan. So in short, I'm saying all I feel ultimately is one, we need to look at number of hours we have, the capacity and resources, capacity we have, the resources we have, and the COVID-19 circumstances we're in. If we don't have that as underpinning what we're doing, is it really a strike plan? It ends up being a wish list. And I can guarantee you now, comrades, you're speaking for Seekoff. We won't achieve half of the things that are there. So for example, to be realistic, just to explain to colleagues, you have the same problem with me more because I deal with bills. I've contacted last week two senior people in Treasury to ask, what bills are you bringing this year? Because according to Alan Wickham, there's only one bill that they have from Treasury. They have two DA bills and one EFF private members bill. All three are private members bills. We don't know what the NA will decide on them and whether they'll refer them to us. Okay, so your issue now is as a, as a CCOF chairperson, is you contact Treasury, and it's not clear at this stage. There's another bill tabled last week, I gather. Uh, and I contacted the chair, the secretary on that side, one of the, and he wasn't aware of it, but probably he's doing a checkup now. So in short, at this stage, colleagues, apart from the normal uh, uh, tax bills, we only have, I think, two bills on the agenda for this year. Then colleagues, as you know, because we have a curtailed year, can we ask ourselves, to what extent have we factored these things into our strat plan? For example, Comrade Chair, right now, we're on a six week constituency period. Normally it's two weeks. I gather we're gonna end on the first week of June rather than the third week of June as we normally do. If indeed the elections take place, I cannot understand how we're gonna do it with the third and fourth surges. Chairperson, how are we going to have this very ambitious programs on both committees when it's likely again that all parties are going to say, no, no, parliament must cut its year down, as we've done since 1996 or 1995, the first local government election. No, 95, we sat through it. 96 onwards or 99 onwards, we just cut the year. So does our strat plan factor that in? <laughs> that is why I'm saying, unfortunately, <laughs> because of the committee section, they have this, like, what you call a uh, 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 template Excuse me, and we have to fit in with that. But the committee uh, staff have done a superb job. It's us. We're not thinking through what all these things mean. We can't expect the staff. They can take these things into account, factor into account. So I'm going on and on, but I won't be speaking again on these issues from my chair because I've done it now for a very long time, and I'm doing it again now. And I don't want to sound like a cracked record, so I won't raise these things again. Thank you. If people agree, fine. If they don't agree, I'm cool. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Karim. I see the hand of uh, Honorable Dennis Ryder. Yeah, thanks very much, Chair. Look, I just want to agree with uh, uh, Yunus in his first point. Look, I don't know where he went after that, but uh, the point that we, uh, we're we probably not doing our oversight role any justice. And I, I raised the point, you know, we, we raised it in our, con in our deliberations several times about Treasury's quarterly reports on the performance both of, of, of provincial spending and, and, and local government spending, um, you know, that'll help us to our oversight. I raised it in my comments earlier. Uh, you know, yeah, you can, you, you can take that from where it comes. And then, of course, the issue around the allocations to local government um, that we've all spoken about, that the FFC has been on about since 2019, uh, and the fact that local government is being set up to fail, uh, Treasury's point of view that no, uh, local government sets themselves up for failure by, uh, by spending money badly, uh, no middle ground, no one willing to move off their positions. Uh, and, you know, as oversight, it's probably our space to, to help find middle ground. But I see it's not included in, 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 in the report uh, in detail. But uh, yeah, it, it, it would have been nice to see it there, Chair. But but that's that, those are my comments. I agree with I agree with uh, uh, Mr. Karim that uh, our oversight role really needs to be strengthened. Thank you very much. I think the the presentation, according to me, was on point because we 
were able to exactly. assess and identify our weaknesses and try to come with the strategic intervention in terms of improving and uh, reminding ourselves what is expected of us. That uh, the main uh, mandate to us is to focus on the implementation of budget. So the oversight that we need to do also, remember, pre I don't know, it's how many weeks back, uh, I don't know, was it uh, during my, no, before, before the, 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 the leave, we have called certain departments of agriculture where uh, those departments from, that, uh, from those uh, uh, provinces were underspending on the, on, the, on, the, on the grant. So we have engaged them and we also need to improve going forward on those issues. There's an item on the presentation on item five, which speaks to the improvement to strengthen our oversight uh, as, 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 as a select committee, our responsibility, uh, where can we improve? And there are issues that have been identified uh, in that item num number five. Um, previously, we've been talking about the tracking system, and I think we have all agreed that we, have, we, we need to do that. We've started it, but um, somehow, I don't know, I can't blame um, COVID-19 because you just do communication electronically. You can write letters as a, 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 a suggested by the report here that we can write to communicate with the relevant minister uh, when time be. We did it, but it, I think somehow we lost it. We need to go back to, 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 to that and strengthen our, tra our tracking system on issues that we have resolved on, that the house has resolved on and the committee uh, 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 so that we, we get to understand uh, how far are we are we making an impact in terms of our, our work? Um, the, very, the other important thing that I think has been raised here is the issue of the, the audit commit. Before we go to the AG, there are people there who are doing uh, internal audit uh, work and are paid for that. So what uh, Mr. Lome is saying is, is raising is that in some instances you will find that in, in those institutions, they will have internal audit committees as a matter of compliance, but they don't take them serious. They don't, they don't utilize them. And they don't know that uh, uh, the internal audit committees are there for their own benefit because they will be able to identify issues and att attend to those issues before the AG comes. So those are the things that we need to, 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 to strengthen on. I have just uh, noted a few, but I think the, the report or the presentation is very rich. The 30-day payment, it's, it's a song that has been there for years, for years. And I think we have made a commitment at Select Committee on Appropriation that uh, six parliament, we are going to make a contribution to make sure that it changes its, its com uh, complexion, its operation, and uh, that it's respected, that we will do our work as expected. You know, remember if the few, uh, the few companies that are still uh, uh, operating after they, 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 they've been affected. Some have been affected by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. The few that are left, they are still struggling to be paid in time by uh, the, the, the state organs. So we need to do something about that. We know one of them is, uh, is ESCO. So 
we need to do our work. Money that have been allocated for 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 different uh, departments, for different uh, 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 organizations, we need to follow that money up to see if that money is spent correctly and not to wait until there's there's a problem. We should be able, as a select committee, to identify uh, the red flags. Um, I'm trying to check if there's anyone else that wants to speak from the members. There's no one. Members, with your permission, can we then uh, thank the two... Uh, Chairperson, just one, one thing that struck me this thing again. Called, sorry, Chair. I should have come in. You see, why don't we add what Dennis has said? Firstly, like, like you know, the NA committee does a fiscal framework quarterly report. We can join them. There's no reason to have the NA committee when it has a, a fiscal framework report. It's the same report. Then we have another one on the same issues. So we can encourage in Kululeko to see with Alan Wickham, and I'll speak to the chair, to have them jointly where we can. But the more important point that he's making, I think, is the one he's just made, which is we should have our quarterly report, as you've been doing in appropriations, on provincial and local government spending. That's what we have to monitor. The second point he made, which falls under CCOF, is on cryptocurrency. I think uh, uh, in Kululeko, add that as an item on the agenda. Uh, and thirdly, where we do oversight, as Esther said, on all these bodies, we have to tell them that this is the specific angle we're looking for. So they don't feel they're coming back to say the same things to us as they've said to scoff. So we ask them for provincial and local government issues. Like the land bank is important because agriculture is a concurrent function although land is a national function. So we need to take account of what's there in the constitution. So in short, we should make amendments to guide the two staff members on what changes we want. So, you know, uh, I would urge that what Dennis is saying now, it's consistent with our role as the NCOP committees. We do that. Thank you. Honorable Ryder. Sorry, I don't want to start a debate. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just think the focus of, of our oversight on those quarterly reports is quite different from the NA's focus and should be correctly more focused on, on, on province. But it, it's just a comment, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to run your committee. Thank you. Thank you. In addition to what you're saying, provinces and municipalities, uh, that's our mandate. Members, with your permission, can I thank the two officials for the presentation? Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Ryder. I, say your, I saw your indication. Thank you very much, uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, we will keep on uh, doing this. Remember, last year we were supposed to have these workshops. And because of the, the load work, we have agreed that we will postpone them and, and, and keep on doing them. It's a, doing them this year. It's an ongoing uh, a, a, a process. The once off is not an event uh, so that we keep reminding ourselves of the mandate and see uh, if we are still on the, on the line, we are still doing what is expected of us. Thank you uh, everybody uh, for... Sure. For, for for the for the contribution we are now mr domo yes before before you close chair uh, thanks uh, i i'm not sure if i can be able to pick up on few issues that members have raised before you close on the matter uh just in brief because we still Quickly. have an outstanding item that we need okay. to do okay uh, okay, Chair. Just, just a quick one, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Members, for, for the input. I think this presents an opportunity for us to reshape, to reshape the, 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 the draft AAPP. Uh, uh, the issue around the tracking mechanism, Chair, uh, that you've raised, we, we have an updated report uh, as we speak. I'll, I'll request the colleagues to share that report with the, with the members, which captures the latest uh, 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 responses. Uh, by the Minister of Finance, emanating from the MTPPS uh, report of the committee. Um, um, around the issue of uh, a 30-day payment, 
uh, Chair, I, I want us to take it further. Not only look at the day payment by departments, but also uh, provincial public works departments. Provincial public works departments, including the national, uh, are unable to build their sister departments on time. And therefore that has got a, repli a repli effect, a, rep a negative effect into the expenditure of, of, of those departments. So you will see the expenditure of those departments not moving uh, uh, and you're like, why are you not spending your money? Only to find that the issue is public works that is building infrastructure for those some of those departments is not building them on time. That's another critical issue that uh, we, we can look at as appropriation, but also finance from their side as they check expenditure, they can also look at. Uh, the issue around the, 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 the sector oversight, uh, Chair, I, I, I am glad that you are noting that we've only looked at agriculture. We need to open our scope. We need to look at other sectors as well that are not spending their money. The issue around the impact that is made by the committee, which we also raised, Chair, we cannot be in a position to assess the impact made by the committee without conducting effective in-year monitoring. And not only that, but also go on site and look at how these conditional grants are being spent on the ground. Chair, I was in the Northwest, as you are aware, in the previous, in the last week. <laughs> Chair, things that we are picking up on the ground, on projects, are, are quite shocking. The issue around the cost escalations on project is a problem. It's an enormous problem, Chair. It's one issue that the committee, as it approves conditional grants, it needs to interrogate, it needs to look at, because some of those projects, if not most, are implemented via conditional grants. So the issue of cost escalation is an issue that the departments needs to, and provinces, treasuries, provincial treasuries and national, needs to make sure that there are systems in place to avoid these things. There are deviations that are taking place and necessarily emanating from poor planning or a lack of capacity in departments. But also on the other hand, Chair, you can also say that one might argue and say, no, capacity had been eroded in some way, somehow in some departments because people wanted to bring in consultants to do the work that is supposed to be done by, by, by officials. So Chair, it's, 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 a, it's a number of issues. And, and so what I'm saying is that you, you, you will not be in a position to assess the impact uh, that the committee makes until you put all these pieces of the puzzle together and begin to say what is the report says and vis a -vis what you see on the ground and what are the what are the variances and the deviations thereof. Then you can make your inferences there. Uh, around the performance information chair, in the NA, when we came in the NA, the NA committee was looking at figures only. And we said, it does not make sense. We develop a template there. Treasury implemented the template. Today, the NA has got what we call a consolidated report that National Treasury every quarter present in the NA, which consists of the figures on expenditure as well as the performance information. That report is very helpful for the NA. It's very, uh, it's very uh, assisting. Now, we adopted the same when we came in the NSOP again, the same strategy to say, let's develop a template that will speak to the needs and the requirements of the committee for it to conduct effective oversight. We developed that template and we sent it to the National Treasury, but up to today, we have not had any response, Chair. So I think that's the matter that we need to follow up because it compromises and weakens the oversight, the very much needed oversight that the committee needs to do. So that you can eventually be able to speak about the impact and assess the impact of the committee, given all things and all instruments in totality that we have considered. Thank you very much, Chairperson, for the opportunity and members, and thanks for your input. Uh, it's really encouraging. We will definitely update uh, uh, the draft APPs going forward. Thank you very much. Uh, very important additions, uh, Mr. Lomo, uh, on what the members have said and uh, what you have presented. I think going forward, we just have to make sure that we keep on checking what we are doing and uh, do it by the book. Um, who's going to, uh, to be responsible for the minutes for finance? Hello, Chair. It's uh, Can I ask the co-chairperson to talk over? Yes. Okay. No. Uh, sorry, hey, uh, colleagues. Yeah. Co yeah, I'm here. Thanks. Just one second. Okay, can you handle all the, the meetings? I think we'll have only one set from appropriations. Estelle, okay. it's only one, eh? Hello, Chair. 
हेलो चेबेसिन यस यस लुबाबालो यस यस चेबेसिन नो आई वांट टू आई कैन हियर यू लुबाबालो यस आई वांट टू एड्रेस यू ऑन द इशू ऑफ मिनिस्टर यस वी ओनली हैव वन सेट ऑफ मिनिस्टर आउटस्टैंडिंग चेबेसिन बट इट इज नॉट रेडी फॉर पार्ट ऑफ सो वी विल एड ओके इट्स फाइन वी कैन डील विद फाइनेंस यस कोच चेबेसिन थैंक यू थैंक यू thank you when you are so ready colleagues. thank you yeah no i'm ready uh, the list of minutes you've got as well right so the first minutes look colleagues there is a problem which has been raised before and presumably nikola leko engages with ellen most of the uh, minutes in the first quarter are joint committee meetings right so i think it's the two secretaries on that side and our secretary do the minutes together so you know obviously we can't have different minutes for the same meeting on the na side and the ncop side so when it comes to the joint meetings is I, i don't know there's very really limited room to make the changes but where in kulileko there have been changes already made by the na committee just alert alert them to it so on the 2nd february 2021 uh colleagues are there any amendments people want to make colleagues uh, in kulileko will help me with that Okay, yes sir yes, no, i don't see any hands just tell me no hands okay so we need a mover and a seconder please and can we be swift because uh i i think it's 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 if there's no issues with the minutes i move the uh, person thank you is there a seconder please zolani njadu yeah i'll second that uh, chair thank you dennis okay the next meeting is the 9th of february any comments and changes okay a move and second please i move to i move to the president thank you vani thank you uh, thank you 23rd february mm-hmm. any changes no and then we go into this obviously from there onwards into the joint meetings but 25th february is all joint meetings any changes what we can do if any colleagues pick up uh, some grammatical errors we can then refer it to the na and they can make it just because they don't have to meet again i mean these are small technical things but if there's any content issues then we have to refer the minutes back okay so on 23rd of february 25th of february sorry move and seconder please i move thank you seconder Selling. thank you willy seconder I second. Thank you. Second Thank you. It's 2nd of March 2021. No nope, issues so then move and second up please. Yeah, I'll move to. Thank you. Second up. I'll second to. 3rd of March. No issues. Move and second up please. These are all meetings we have with I the move chairperson Thank you seconder please I move chairperson Thank you we heard that seconder I'll second chairperson Thank you 5th of March No issues move a seconder please I'll move to as long as we know how many meetings we had in that short brief period <laughs> what well, Why are you asking for Dennis? A performance bonus. I'll, I'll well second. Deserved. I'll it's second well that, and I'll second. Us, I'll tell you that. Okay. I'll second that, and I'll second the performance bonus for Dennis. Thank you. <laughs> Only for Dennis. <laughs> What about you? Attended most of those meetings too. What about the poor chairperson? Okay. Fifth of March, colleagues. Any issues? No. Move and second. I'll move. Okay. Ninth of March. Any issues? Sorry, we need a seconder for that. Oh, sorry, a seconder. I apologize. Thank you. 9th of March. Any issues? I can't. I was not there. Right. So obviously, uh, yeah, because you went family leave. We appreciate that. 9th of March. No issues. Move and seconder, please. I move, chair. Thank you. Uh, 16th of March. Move and seconder. I'll second that no previous issues. one. Okay. Uh, move and second there for the 16th of march if there are no issues 
I move, Chair. Okay. Thanks. Okay, then, colleagues, we're done with the minutes. Thanks very much. And I, and I second, Chair. Thank you. And, and I second, Esther, Chair. But, yeah, just to let you know, they do provide the minutes regularly. It's just that we're so caught up on policy issues, but I want to thank both of them because they're very efficient in submitting them. And in Kulileko in particular for harassing me to look at them. But when it comes to joint meeting, I must confess, I just browse through them because, and I make some of the changes beforehand, but there weren't any I could see. So thank you to both of them. Then the final issue is the consideration and adoption of the committee program for the second term on CCOF side. Uh, now there, the program was sent out to you about 10, 12 days ago, I think, or last week sometime. And uh, yes, Benin Kuleko was in, in the Northwest. And I think we should amend that program uh, in some way, uh, taking into account the point about cryptocurrency. Uh, and we should slide in Erba uh, on the recommendation of Dennis, both these things, uh, and coming from the Auditing Profession Amendment Bill. And then what we have to do, colleagues, is uh, 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 accept that there are some days that, uh, in, uh, that, that the appropriations committee told us look, that we've got uh, sittings or strategic sessions. Uh, by the NCOP powers that be for all of us. So taking that into account, there it is on the screen. Uh, the 40 is out now, I'm afraid, so we've lost that. Now, ideally, we should do the 11 together with the NA committee, but uh, in Kuruleko, can you see if they're available so we can do it together? Then the next one, as you can see, colleagues, is the briefing on the bill. I'm told we will have got it by then. And if we haven't, then we'll slot in uh, uh, something that we've identified. I think if you look above uh, in Kuleleko, we've got items that we want to slide in. Did you type that in or take it out on the top? Like, you remember I typed in uh, items that we will use. Did you remove that? Yeah, we've got Erba, FSCA. We should add three, uh, 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 what you call uh, a discussion on cryptocurrency. and Bitcoin and so on. Uh, I think it's called what digital, I don't know what the word is, I've forgotten. Ask, <laughs> Alan will tell you what we uh, labeled it. So it's the same sort of thing that Dennis is asking. It's a fascinating area. And again, without that we're in a digitalized world even more, we're pushed forward by the disaster of COVID. This is becoming bigger and bigger. But as Dennis rightly also says, look, it's a very complex area. If you look at what's going on in the media and uh, we had agreed that the, South African Reserve Bank at that time would declare, you remember, uh, come up with regulations on this and so on. So we need to bring in the Reserve Bank, the uh, FSCA, National Treasury, and other relevant parties there. So, uh, okay, is there anything else you want to add? Remember, it's a draft. Nothing stops people from writing to us and uh, saying that, look, guys, uh, this is what we think we should add. We've always been open to that in any case, we amend the legislation as things go. Okay, so we will, if something happens like the NA doesn't give us the bill when they expect to give it to us, then we will slide in one of those three items, depending on, uh, on who's quickest to pull together. Having said that, can somebody move and second this for now as a draft report to be changed as and when necessary, as always happens. Is there a mover? I move, Chair. Seconder. Second in Chair. Thanks. Right, now, as far as the final item that we put on the agenda today, there is no need. Uh, there is a letter, we'll forward that to you. Uh, 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 I haven't seen it yet. In Kuleleko, can you send it out to the members? We'll do so, Chairperson. Okay. Yeah, can I finally say, colleagues, look, can we, Based on what we said in, I think, November 10th last year in the fiscal framework on Mr. Meekin, because I need to contact him and let him know because he keeps writing to me. Now, he also writes to the NA speaker and the NCOP chair. And then when they come back to me and explain what the issues are, they say, no, the committee's done nothing errant. Now, because he's an elderly person, it's not, he's not Kosatu, he doesn't have a big base, or he's not Busa, but I mean, he's got this lobby group, right? And because of his age and he's a veteran, and because he remains unremittingly committed to what he believes in. And I first encountered him, as I think I told you, in 2003-04, where he sat in every committee meeting on the property rates bill. 
uh, I think we owe him a closure now. So can I take it the committee today agrees that with this reply, there's nothing further for the committee to do. It's a fundamental disagreement. No party agrees with his view that there should be land only taxation in the country, both at local level and national level. So can I take it that somebody's gonna move and second that and I write to him to tell him, here's your letter. And the committee decided that for us, it's closure now. He has a right to campaign as I've written to him and lobby, but the committees can do nothing more once Tracy has replied and implemented the recommendation. Can we have a move and second that to that please? So I know I have a mandate to tell him that, look, thank you very much, but he comes every quarter, every twice a year. For years, he's been doing it intermittently, but recently he's coming all the time. So okay. are people fine with that? Jay, uh, just a question. Yeah. Uh, is it constitutional yeah. to prevent him from, from stating his case in spite no, of the no. fact that he's repetitive in the, the presentation that he has every time? No. That's not what we are saying. You're a good question. We can't stop somebody coming. You can ask Frank, but remember, we, the committee, and Frank is here, you must confirm it. When you get 10 applications, say, for public hearings, the committee, as Frank has reported on it, so unless funny you or anybody else wants him to report again, the committee has to apply its mind to all 10, right? Written representations. But it's the committee that decides based on availability of time, resources, et cetera, how many of those 10 it'll include? So nobody is constitutionally entitled to have an oral submission. That remains the responsibility of parliamentary committees. But we, as you know, if we have 10 and we only have six before a public oral hearing, then we say to the staff, provide a summary of the four people who are not going to appear. So yes, nothing stops him, good point, funny, nothing stops him from writing the same thing forever and ever. But as a committee, there are two things we're not obliged to do, as I explained to him in letters as well, based on my consultation, with, I think the parliament's lawyers. Uh, what I'm saying is that he keeps writing to me. And what I want to say to him, you're free, as I told him, to keep lobbying and to write to us. But the choice about whether you appear in the hearings before us or not is ours. And you're urging me to, 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 to ask Treasury to engage with you is now being done. There's nothing more I can do. I'm not legally in a position to force Treasury to continue to engage with him forever and ever. It's like a fundamental difference of policy, right? That's what it is. But you're right, we can't stop him. Oh, he must continue. So that's what we say. If you want, I can send you the draft of the letter. And then if anybody objects to it, you can make the changes. So can we agree on the broad thrust of what I'm saying? Within the next two days or so, I will send you a draft letter to everybody and not send it to you. Okay, can we agree on that? So you can look at it. In any case, Frank will see the letter. Jay, anybody want to say? Can, can I just ask, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure that we've had sight of some of his other submissions. But perhaps in your letter, you can just send the last, his last submission. Yeah, I'll, say, I'll, say, I'll send that. Yes, yes, of course I should do that. I will send you the submissions, uh, all of it, and then you can look at the letter. Right. In fact, I'd rather you just did it today so we reply to him tomorrow. It's nothing controversial. I'm just a bit caught up now, but this evening I'll do a letter and let's let by 10 o'clock tomorrow. It's going to be a few lights. Okay. So funny, his constitutional right is not uh, undermined. But the story goes back to 2003. And chaos, can I suggest to you, there are very few chairpersons I know that will engage with him the way we have in the various committees I've chaired. And finally, to tell you, if you care to, that there was a call for us to oppose the budget. And I did reply to that. If you want a copy of that letter, I mean, these are routine things to say that, look, we respect your right to call for it. But our view is that we can't reject the budget as a whole, as much as we're critical of aspects of it, that, uh, you know, uh, basically you must continue your good work. But if we were to reject the whole budget, it will exacerbate the economic and financial crisis we have, which has been exaggerated or exacerbated by the COVID thing. 
Then there was a call individualized around me, but I gather on a few MPs saying, you know, there's a campaign calling on us to have a basic income grant. As you know, personally, many of us support it and I serving in other structures of over 20 years supported it. So I merely referred to the, I mean, the section on the recommendations where we said something like, while recognizing the economic and financial crisis the currently current the current the country currently faces, comma, we request National Treasury to seriously consider the extension of that 350 grant, I think, and a basic income grant, which is being discussed in ANC circles, but it hasn't yet succeeded in government circles. So all I did was repeat that. So I do engage in civil society, and this is part of it. Meekin, the who is this group, the whole group of, and they released a press release, an open letter to us. Uh, addressed to Joe and myself, saying that they were calling on us to reject the budget as a whole, and the budget is unconstitutional. I, I, I couldn't understand how it can be unconstitutional, because remember the socioeconomic rights, it says, it's interesting, it's a court case, the constitutional court decided that yes, the parliament and the government are obliged to meet the socioeconomic rights in the constitution. However, it must be a progressive realization of free education, free health services, and all of that, you know, basic services, taking into account the resources. So it's an incremental thing. Uh, I spoke to Frank, he crafted that section. So I can send you those letters. I mean, this happens all the time. So I will never, ever do something. Frankly, if you know my take on public participation, if you look at the stuff I've written, I would never deny anybody their constitutional right. So Mr. Weekend's welcome to write to us all the time, but there's nothing further I can do to force Treasury to, to, to endlessly engage with him. No, no, there's no authority I have, as far as I know. Frank, do you want to say anything on these issues so that we're clear so we don't have endless discussions about it? Do you want to say anything, Frank? On that letter, you saw it, right? The one to yes. civil society. Yeah, and you contributed, and I left it word for word as you have it. In kululeko has got copies but I'll yes. send the final drafts and we'll send it out to everybody. What, what, you want to say something, Frank? No, that, that, that's all in order. And as you said, it was the, the submission, um, the earlier submission about land tax that has been made time and time again. It is for the committee. If the members of the committee are the same members, there's, there's really no effectiveness or efficiency to listen to the same thing if uh, the committee doesn't want to. to. But certainly the written submissions can't be prevented, as you said. So there's actually, I just agree with what you've said, Chairperson. and it, it is as you said. Thanks. Okay, funny, you're right to raise it, good point. And please know that, you know what, if I do anything, then you know what, before you guys fire me, I will resign. I won't do anything illegal. Uh, not for things that I was part of shaping actually in some small way. Okay, are we done? Right, in that case, back to you, Dick Lady, to close the meeting and there's a set of minutes that I'm not sure whether you want to adopt or not. Thank you. And thank you for taking me in responsible for chairing this useful meeting. Are you there, Comrade Dix? Have we lost her in Kolleko? She seems to be here. Yeah, she is here, Chair, but I think she's far from the laptop. That's why she... All right. So this is yeah, people have to also understanding, you know, you have to sometimes, like, today is ridiculous things. Somebody came and delivered something. They didn't send me an SMS. It was meant to come tomorrow, and I had to go out because my partner's not here at the moment. So basically... You know, we understand. So on behalf of Dick Lady also and myself, we thank all of you. We plead with, um, with the two uh, content advisors to think through some of the broader issues raised about what is a threat plan. And we ask members to mull over those issues. We will not allow a total agreement, but some or other issues related to COVID-19. One pleads, let's preempt uh, 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 things that are looming in this global environment, let alone our environment, around you know the fact that we have to be more digitalized and we have to be more effective and efficient in different ways now, as the whole world is required to be. So we need to insert those things into our discussions. And hopefully when we meet on the fourth and fifth, those comrades and colleagues who agree with some of the things should insert it into the NCOP strat plan discussions also. But yeah, that being said, also we must accept if the majority don't agree with us, there's nothing we can do. I will not 
like Peter, well, leave us. Uh, funny, I will not, even though it's my right, raise the same issues over and over again. I'll raise it in the strike plan discussions uh, with the NCOP. I won't raise it in this committee again because there's not enough currency for it. There's not enough support for it, but fine. You know, I'm just one member. That's the point I was making earlier, and I won't bore you yet again, funny, with those issues. I assure you of that. Good, be done. Is there anything else people want to say? As far as I know, Lubabalo in Kululeko, there are no committee meetings except the Section 100 <laughs> one over the next few weeks until we come back in five weeks' time. Is that correct, in Kululeko, Lubabalo? Are there any meetings? There are no meetings, Chair. You are correct. Uh, Lubabalo, you don't have any meetings either for us in Sekoa, right? Yes, Chairperson, we don't have any meetings. This and in Kuleko, we've got some meetings on Section 100 later this week or next week. I saw the WhatsApp. Is that correct? Because half no, most no, of the half of us are there. It was supposed to be today, Chair. We have postponed it. Mm -hmm. uh, we, with, the, with the program that side, we will send it to members once it's done. Okay. All right. Thank you, colleagues. See you Chair, whenever. Chairperson, Chairperson. So, yeah, sure. Pelalani. Yeah, yes, Chairperson, before you close. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry to do this, Chair. I, but I was oh, hoping that I, I was hoping, Chair, that uh, or we were hoping, myself and my colleague Esther, uh, that in your closing, we will also be able to guide us as to <clears throat> how is the submission of the threat plan to the Office of the House Chair going to take place? Um, are we going to go and effect the input that members have raised now, then submit? or we effect the input, send it back to the committee, then the committee endorses it, if it endorses it, then we send it to the, to the Office of the House Chair, because the deadline is still stands in the Office of the House Chair as far as I know, Chair. So we'll appreciate your guidance in that regard. Thanks. What deadline have they given? Because I spoke to both the House Chair and the uh, Chief Whip about having a joint strike plan and doing it within two weeks after the budget's finished. Now, what have they said? What's, what's, the, what's their deadline? No, the deadline, Chair, it's the same as the one you sent to us um, uh, that uh, just after the meeting, we will have to submit it to the to the Office of the yes. House Chair. Okay. But so if, that has changed, if that has changed, then we will be able to... No, 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 it's that. fine. So I, I, I will negotiate for the guidance. with them. They, they're not going to kill us. They just want us to do it properly. So, colleagues, can I suggest a reply to Pelalani Blum? It's not clear to me what we agreed on and what we didn't agree on. So I don't know how we guide them. And I could see that the issues I raised, there wasn't much support for. So Pelanai dropped the issues I raised, you know, about looking at capacity, resources, number of hours, uh, and, 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 and the specific role of, of the NCOP and so on. There doesn't seem to be agreement. So drop all of that. The only things that you need to change in that case are that, um, I don't even know what we agreed on. So I don't know. Dick Lady is not here to guide me. And we didn't draw conclude. We didn't say, OK, on the discussion we're having, these are the issues. So I don't think there's anything much for you to do. Maybe you want to observe towards the end that there were some of these issues raised. And there was no agreement on it. And there'll be further discussions at some stage, maybe. Uh, the points I just raised. Uh, secondly, um, are there specific things people want included? All I know is that Dennis raised cryptocurrency and we agreed on uh, uh, these quarterly reports being done. Here again, what I would like to suggest you think about uh, committee members is that it should be done with the appropriations committee. Although we focus more on provincial. Yeah, so I think it's fine to do it on our own. So I think those are the two proposals Dennis had, which I think there was consensus around. I don't know what the response is of committee members to what I've said. So I, I, I already said, yes, we agree. Uh, so I think drop that or just put it in as something you people feel, the two of you, you might want to consider next year this time. But there's no agreement on it. So let's leave it. OK, okay that, uh, those minor changes. And then uh, let, send it to the two chairs and to the members in tracking. And then if members want to uh, be given time, maybe till 5 p.m. tomorrow, and then the very following day, that will be Thursday, we present it to the powers that be. Okay. Is that fine, colleagues? It's fine, Chair. Okay, good. Let's move on. Thanks, everybody. Bye, then.